Right, welcome to another episode of Warhammer 40,000. It's 2,000 points and a combination that we have not done yet, I think, or one that we haven't done for a long, long time, especially now with the Imperial Fists going over into Primaris. I honestly don't think these two sides have clashed before, so exciting lineup uh, here in this game. So just a friendly game. It is going to be Kingslayer, though. Both these armies still have their king alive. So the army commander uh, model for each side is still alive. Uh, they, they're on one life, basically. So they're going to try and last through the whole of the season. And any survivors uh, will get the glory. It's all been inspired by Abaddon surviving on the channel, not being destroyed yet. So we're going to give all the factions a king. Uh, a number of them have been slain already. Uh, you can check out the battle reports already for this season. Uh, you can see the number of kings that already have been slain. But for these two factions, uh, both remain alive. So, big thank you to everyone that supports us on Patreon. Gold level Patreons, they get a Patronic dice and name shout out at some critical point during the game. Silver level Patreons, I'll call their names out at the end of the battle. And you can check out the credits of the video with all the Patreons, including those supporting a bronze. Patreon support is much appreciated. It helps support the channel, uh, the models and the armies expanding on the channel, and then also SSWG Wargames Club. Uh, we help support them through the Patreon page as well. Link for Patreon in the video description below. So this is a 2000 points game. It's Tau Empire. This is a stand-in force. So I'm, I'm painting up new units at the moment. Uh, in fact, I've got one of the updated models here. So I'm working on uh, the new Crisis Battlesuit sculpts and... Uh, an improved and quicker process for painting them up in this uh, grey, white, orange colour scheme. So I hope to do a painting tutorial. We're working on brand new Crisis Battlesuit teams here for the tower. Just going to revamp the army uh, is the plan. But for now, uh, just experiment and see what works. Storm Surge has been dropped, so it's a huge chunk of points gone. Some units uh, are going to fill in uh, that slot temporarily whilst I paint up uh, new stuff uh, for my tower force. So for this tower list, experimental, uh, but we'll see how we get on. Uh, a bit of narrative here in this game as well. There is a, a downed tower commander who's been slain, and this tower task force has been sent in to investigate what's happened. So nice bit of narrative uh, here for this Kingslayer battle. So uh, we've got Shadow Sun, and uh, she's going to be in the list here just to see how she gets on. Uh, then we have a, a crisis battle suit commander. So it's Commander Ghost Tide, uh, Shield Drone being taken for him, and a Marker Drone uh, being taken for this model. The loadout will match the large squad of Crisis Battle Suits that he's going to go with. So it's one Plasma Rifle, one Fusion Blaster, and then one Cyclic Iron Blaster being taken for him, and that's going to match in uh, with his Bodyguard squad. I have paid for an upgrade. It's exemplar of the Kuyan, so the Kuyan ability will kick in a turn early, so like turn two onwards, it will be popping... Uh, extra hits, sustained hits of one or two if the uh, tar target's been uh, marker lighted up. So pretty good enhancement for him. And it's Crisis Battlesuit Commander. He's got re reroll ones for his unit as well, which is uh, nice uh, for firepower. So that's him. Then uh, we've got Shadow Sun. I've got a couple of other HQs as well. So it's a Cadre Fireblade, Marker Drone Shield Drone for him. Marker Drone Shield Drone as well being taken for the Ethereal on foot. Uh, as well just some of this is temporary but four squads of strike teams here squads of 10 uh, each of them taken as a guardian drone for each of those i'm just borrowing the drones i really run out of drones over the rules currently uh, for the tower but i'm just borrowing drones here from uh, the ghost kill battle suits just to mark out the guardian drone uh, option then coming up in this direction two hammerheads long strike the character hammerhead been taken smart missile systems two seeker missiles and the rail gun then hammerhead number two just a regular hammerhead and the same configuration same loadout uh, as long strikes they'll fight as a pair they'll hunt together then broadsides then a uh, squad of three with heavy rail rifles the double the twin plasma rifle and then a seeker missile for each of those uh, all of them taking shield drones and then just one marker drone being taken in that squad uh, then across here broadsides again and so high your missile pods, seek a missile for each of those, and then the smart missile systems for them. Again, taking shield drones, and then a marker drone as on uh, one of the models as well. I should say four plus invulnerable save shield generators being granted uh, to all of these models as well. And then for crisis battle suits, 
So I've got a squad of three. These are this is the missile pod team. So they're tra taking triple missile pods each and uh, shield generators, shield drones, one marker drone in the squad, and then the mix and match squad here to go with the commander. So fusion blaster, plasma rifle, uh, and cyclic iron blaster on each of those models. They're all taking shield generators as well. Shield drones across the entire squad, and again just one uh, marker drone being taken in the squad as well but that's the list for the tower it's pretty bulky it's a lot of stuff here hopefully a lot of firepower uh, the tower can command the battlefield uh, with their long range and short range uh, weaponry hold it right there i've missed something uh, it's with the points managed to sneak in a unit of uh, stealth battle suits uh, here as well so those are in squad of three is a fusion blaster in there uh, and then a shield drone marker drone being taken on that squad as well. But that's the list here for the tower. All right, so that's the list here for the tower. Phoenix Lords and Autarchs have been allocated. So split the Autarchs up this time. Uh, some will come with me and some will go with the Imperial Fists. So that's individual models. Uh, so Ite Miara, uh, William, who's just joined us uh, here at Autark level, and then Midnight Miniatures as well onto the broadsides with the heavy air rifles. And then Phoenix Lord to take command of whole units for the game. Longbow BB for his long range firepower support. On to uh, Long Strike here for this game. Gut B is a tower player, put him onto Hammerhead number two. Vagabond, another tower player, gonna put him onto the broadside team uh, here, this squad. Uh, then Amy Almo onto Shadow Sun. Uh, Nate Miller's gonna go uh, onto Ghost Tide here for this game. JP, something sneaky, so put him onto the stealth team for this battle. Ben Shaw onto the large crisis battle suit team. And then BPP Wargaming, again, another tower player, put him onto uh, this Crisis Battlesuit team with the missile pods. That's the list here for the tower. Guns at the ready. We'll take a look now and see what the Imperial Fists have in their list. All right, so 2,000 points of Imperial Fists. A bit of help coming through from the Red Scorpions. These two chapters will part company uh, at some point as far as lending models is concerned. But just for now, as we plug the gaps here for the Imperial Fists and the Red Scorpions have got their own... 2,000 points list uh, developing at the moment. About 1,000 points for them. Uh, there's a massive batch or big batch of, of models that's gone off to Siege Studios. They're currently painting up models uh, for the Red Scorpions as well. But Imperial Fists mostly, and then just a few Red Scorpion uh, units just to bulk up the points. The other thing is that there's been points reductions for the Space Marines, and yet again, more points being dropped uh, here with the latest update from Games Workshop. So I'm going to run the Imperial Fists here as an Anvil Siege Force, just to fit in with the theme uh, here for the Imperial Fists. So uh, it's HQ's first all got a Chaplain, Chaplain for Lotus uh, on bike here. He's going to go uh, with the Outriders and ATV. Uh, then we have a Captain in a Gravis Armour, so that's this model here. And most of the Imperial Fists have been pro-painted by Siege Studios. So you can check them out for your own painting commission work. Just to give you an idea, this is a silver level here for the characters from C Studios. They've done a brilliant job. So this is Captain Parmenian, taking inspiration for the names here for my Imperial Fists from Greek mythology, and Alexander the Great, and so on. So it's Captain Parmenian here, the cavalry commander for Alexander the Great. Uh, again, uh, for Lotus as well as, as one of the cavalrymen uh, here in Alexander the Great's force. Uh, a lieutenant and a chaplain, so uh, Lieutenant Cletus uh, here for the Imperial Fists. Power Fists as seen uh, with him, Plasma Pistol. And then uh, Chaplain Leonatus uh, here for the Imperial Fists, so just a regular chaplain. Fantastic sculpt here, one of my favourite uh, Primaris models from Games Workshop. So plenty of HQs. Uh, then uh, regular intercessor squads, two squads of ten, That's, that means the Lieutenant and Chaplain have a squad each. Uh, just equipped with their bolt rifles and a double grenade launcher in each of those squads as well. So you will see during the game there's a hell blaster in the squad. It's just that I've, I've sent off one of these models as a painting reference to Siege. So they've got one of the intercessors uh, with them at the moment. So I'm just going to use one of the hell blaster models just to fill out uh, that squad. Taking the hammer full bunker uh, here for the fists. So again, very thematic. Double dreadnought here. So regular redemptive dreadnought, which has gone up a little bit in points. Taking the macro plasma incinerator. Uh, for him, then the Brutalis Dreadnought, one of the iconic models now for this Imperial Fist army, so that's been taken with the double melters. Uh, and then the this model with the fist, which is actually the claws it's going to use uh, in close combat. Heavy Intercessors that have taken a points drop, they're in. Double Heavy Bolter in with that squad. 
eradicators are in, two multi-melters and then melter rifles for the rest of uh, that squad. Mentioned the Outriders already with an ATV and multi-melter and then a spare ATV to go on its own again with a multi-melter. Add then the servo turret. This one, I haven't the heart to bring it in the game. It's on the painting desk. It's got to the base coach stage, but it's not acceptable to, <laughs> to come into the, the army here for our games. The idea is to have a squad of two, but it just haven't got enough painting uh, done. It's not far on, far on enough with that model. So we'll leave it out. Add, and then with the points drop from Games Workshop, it's freed up enough points to put in a unit of Inceptors here from the Red Scorpions. But uh, Mike will be glad to uh, be running those here in this list so those are in and that brings up the points total to 1995 points if you add in uh, the points for indomitable fury the enhancement being taken for the anvil siege force uh, and a two plus he'll get back up uh, all of his wounds remaining so uh, that's certainly helpful uh, for this kingslayer game so that's the list here for the imperial fist might walk or take command has used these plenty of times and has led them to victory plenty of times as well but a fresh challenge here Imperial Fist can dish out the damage with their firepower, but so too can the Tau. So a real test for the Imperial Fist firepower and their durability here uh, in this game. And if they can get close enough to the Tau, they'll happily plunge uh, into these multiple close combat units uh, available here for the Fists. Top two levels of support and YouTube channel membership adds unit allocations. So at uh, Altux, first of all, we've put them over onto the bikers here for this game. So Dylan Moore onto the ATV. Then Sam Hermes, Casper Kempf, and Ben Harris onto the Outrider models. Then for whole units, we've put Lucas Brown onto the bunker, Paint Licker's Paint Pot onto the Redemptor Dreadnought. Marfisto's, uh, it's appropriate, but I, I don't know how long this thing's going to last on the board, onto the Brutalis here for this game. Uh, Ray Cross onto the Chaplain on Foot, Chaplain Leonatus. Uh, then we have uh, Andrew Swan onto the lieutenant for this game. Chris Kamiski is going to go on bodyguard duty to protect the captain. Very important one, actually. Uh, an important role here for the, in this game. And then a diehard Imperial Fist player. It's Valhalla Field Marshal Robert. So he's going to be in command here. He will be Captain Parmenian here in this game. And then finally, we have Michael Fryer and a zealot Space Marine player onto the chaplain on the bike here. So Space Marine is ready to go. Plenty of loyal support. Uh, here from Phoenix Swords and Altarx, the diehard Space Marine players. We'll see how well they do here against the Tau. Excited for this one. Uh, it's a first time clash, Kingslayer battle, and should be a good exchange of firepower in this game. So that's the list for both sides. We'll take a look at scenario and deployment next. <laughs> Right, so we have a scenario, it's vital ground, hammer and anvil for deployment, so we are going to be fighting from end to end, so it should be a good exhibition of firepower from one side of the table to the next, and then the mission rule is delayed reserves, which uh, may well affect both sides uh, here in this game. So hammer and anvil deployment, there's five objectives on the board, one of them has been removed though for vital ground, the one in the centre, the one that's closest to the middle, and there was one in the middle, so that's been taken away, so there's a home objective each. Uh, space Marines are going at this end of the board, so their deployments are marked by the green dice across here. So home objective for them. There's a home objective for the tower. It's just over there, just next to the building. And then two objectives remain in no man's land, one on each flank. One just here next to these steps. And then the other one's just the other side of that building over there. So for vital ground, uh, turn two onwards. The control of your home objective is worth two victory points at the start of your command phase. Uh, each of the No Man's Land objectives is worth five points, so you potentially could pick up ten points if you control both at the start of your command phase. And if you're able to take the opponent's objective, it is worth six victory points. That's each turn uh, for those. That's turns two, three, four, and five. So delayed reserves, really it just affects turn two, uh, coming in from reserve uh, until the start of battle round three. Uh, it's basically turn two. Uh, you have to roll up your reserves instead of them automatically coming on. And that's going to be a three plus. On a one or two, they'll fail and they have to stay off the board. So a little bit of disruption uh, potentially with the delayed reserves mission rule. So then we'll clarify terrain now, just so you know what's going on here on the board. There's lots of barricades and pipes uh, here on the table. We're playing buildings like this as sealed buildings and containers. Uh, there is some line of sight blocking obscuring terrain on the board. It's the higher structures on the table. It's this 
a double stack of crates here. We'll play that as obscuring, not this gap though. Then this Z shape running like so uh, will count as obscuring. The L shape construction across there, uh, not this, but the warp portal. Now we're just going to play from the hard edge, so like so, that'll be marking uh, the boundaries there for obscuring this structure here as well, this double stack, this building, and then not that one over there, it's just going to play as normal. Uh, sealed buildings and containers. So you've got pipes, boxes and barrels, some barricades dotted around the board as well. That gives you an idea of terrain. Both of us are going to go for the random draw on secondaries. We'll now start alternating place units on the board next. I just mentioned the battle mat and terrain that we're using in this game. So the battle mat is from gamemat.eu. Sands of time this one, 60 by 44 inches, so perfect for your games of uh, 10th edition. Then uh, we are also using pre-painted terrain from gamemat.eu so it's the industrial terrain set which is this large structure here you also get four of those uh, in that set you get four of those and I've paired them up so there's one and two the other two across the other side you get some pipes as well and also this larger structure here the warp portal uh, is pre-painted and from gamemat.eu as well I've linked it up with some games workshop terrain here just joining the whole thing together to set up this board but you can check out GameMat.eu for your supplies of Bassmats, pre-painted terrain sets from them as well. There's an 11% discount code that you can use, and if it's still running, 20% code available for you as well. It's all in the video description below. All right, so deployment's done for both sides. Fire Warriors, one squad into reserves, covering the tower first of all. Uh, the missile pod team, I put them into reserves, and then uh, the Crisis Commander, uh, Ghost Tide, has gone with the large... Blob uh, of crisis battle suits that will arrive to give us a, a big chunk of the army here for the tower and a nasty amount of firepower available uh, for them, but still a sizable force on the table. So, breaking into two parts, really, to go after these flank objectives. Hammerheads just lingering here at the back, they could veer left or right. We'll see which way uh, the tide goes here in this game. Broadsides, the Hayob Missile Pod team on this right hand side with a strike team that's been joined by the Ethereal. Uh, the stealth team has just pushed forwards a little bit. It does infiltrate, but I don't want to push them too far ahead. Mike can move out quickly with some of his units. Don't want them being gunned down too quickly. Uh, so we've kept it just behind the obscuring terrain. Across the other side, you can see uh, a strike team way over on the left hand side, getting ready to move out onto the objective. Uh, Shadow Suns with this cluster of units. Granted, we're all ones. So there's a nice sort of six inch bubble of influence there for tower units. Broadsides with heavy rail rifles positioned here with an edge just onto the objective just tucked in and, and then able to reach down uh, from on top here with the strike team that have been joined by the Cadre Fireblade for the extra shots uh, coming from him. So that's deployment done for the tower. Uh, getting ready to move out on both flanks and presenting firepower uh, in uh, either direction, so across this way and across the left hand side. In response, the Imperial Fists, they can't cower away, they've got to take the fight to the tower, but at the same time uh, try and preserve themselves uh, from incoming fire. So both the Dreadnoughts have sheltered behind the obscuring terrain. Uh, one lone ATV on this left hand side. Then just come around the other side of the board. The Heavy Intercessors, uh, plenty of wounds, tough durable unit, they position, them, position themselves on top here, getting ready to lay down firepower of their own. Uh, one intercessor squad here being led by the chaplain on the objective. The bunkers positioned here uh, to sit on the objective and then put firepower down this direction. And again, making use of the obscuring terrain, the bikes have been positioned here with the chaplain and the ATV. Uh, so too has the quad turret and the lieutenant squad stationed across here, getting ready to move out in this direction towards the flank objective. Mike does have reserves, actually it's the Warlord, so it's uh, Captain Parmenian uh, to flank with his unit. Mike's saying it's a controversial choice, but he wants to bring them on as an ambush unit, Captain Parmenian to go with them, and then by Deep Strike Reserve uh, will be the Inceptors as well. So the Imperial Fists have a trick up their sleeve here, it's not a full-on in-your-face deployment, but they have uh, an asset that could arrive at turn two onwards on one of the flanks to catch out some of these tower units. Okay, so deployment's done, we're ready to go. There is a sense that the Tau want to give a good exhibition of their firepower, but the Imperial Fists are a tough target for sure. Mike's sheltered, I would say, most of his force here. Do you want to go first or second? 
I don't know. I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? Tricky. It's been a while since I've played. Against, against these towers. Yeah, we've had some run-ins with the tower way back at the towards the beginning of last season. Tower versus Black Legion was a game. Yeah. It's quite eventful for sure. A bit of a grudge built between those two forces, and then hopefully they'll they'll clash again. Tau perhaps trying to arm themselves to try and break the black hole here <laughs> to get to a bad. If you can't fight your way to him, yeah, <laughs> just that, blow that, him away. That's actually where that term came from as a game against the Tau. You throw yes. into them. I did, yeah, entire army for two <laughs> turns or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Couldn't get to them. But that's when you could make Black Legion out of the Terminators and Abaddon beefy. Yeah, it was the end of night edition, that wasn't was it? Nine, yes, yeah. right, gotcha. Okay. Right. We'll roll up to who goes first. I'm Xenos Filth, so I may as well go first and yeah, roll up. Mike's got a beta four. He'll set a pretty good standard there. Five or six, he'll go first. And he does. He's rolled a six. Any? No, I'm not sure if that's good. We'll see. Does he roll out the cavalry here and just go straight for the tower or play more of a measured approach? We'll see. Tough choices. What would you do? Have a think about it. We'll go on to turn one here. Space Rangers to make the first move. So we are on turn one uh, here. Movement's actually finished. There's not been too much here from the Imperial Fist. Assassination and Investigate Signals, which Mike's going to go after here. So he's going to try and rake in points and preserve models on the board, which I think is a wise move. He doesn't want to just present easy targets and move out straight away uh, and play into the hands out of the tower here. So remaining stationary of this, uh, the Dragnaut's holding position here. Uh, the regular marines holding position and then the heavy intercessors are, are shifting across in this direction this is obscuring terrain remember so they're trying to go to their right hand side to shoot across in that direction uh, yeah the reason why the atv didn't need to move is because it's hidden away over there and it's going for investigate signals anyway the bikes have tucked right in here to get hold of in nine uh, for them to get investigate signals as well so mike's going to be happy enough with points coming through move the turret just out here uh, getting ready to put some firepower uh, it's up the board and then roll a one sadly for advancing with the lieutenant leading the way uh, with the intercessor squad perhaps a bit nervous moving out uh, in the face of of tower firepower and then you can see where the heavy intercessors have moved along uh, just to here so imperial fists do have firepower that can engage at long range but mike's trying to play at for the the long term game here uh, and not expose all of his forces too early movements done We'll go on to shooting phase next. A little bit of DACA across the other side. They have the assault ability, uh, the keyword. So uh, intercessors are going to fire into the fire warriors across here. Yeah. The opening salvo here will be the bolter. Uh, threes with lethal for the lieutenant. Great. More lethals. Yeah, there's a two in there. It's been taken out. Threes to wound. At force to wound because of the guardian drone, I remembered. Ah. And it's preserved life. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Three saves, minus one, plus one for cover. Back to fours. Looks like the first casualty is going to come through. And it does. One model slain. It's just one of the models from the back there can go. Yeah. That's it, lovely. Yeah. Gone. First blood. <laughs> Fish blood spilt. 
Next bit of firepower. Okay, heavy intercessors, they just made a regular move, so firepower is available with them. Mike's gonna split here, he's gonna put the heavy bolter shots into yeah, those. They're 36 inch, which and then a 30 inches into those. Yeah. Okay. So the heavy bolters. Three shots each. Three shots each. And then uh, fours. Fours, yeah. Sixes are sustained. Oh, that's just a four. Just the two. Three to wound. That guardian oh. drone, sorry, fours to wound. Yeah, just a one. Nice one. No cover this time. Five up, which we block. Okay, tower armor holding it. Pretty good so far. And then I think 16 shots with the heavy bolt rifles. That one can't see is behind a pillar, so it's going to be 14 shots. Yep. Threes. Threes again. And here. Oh, sorry. No, you're going into those. Right, so you're coming in at strength five. Yeah. We are toughness six. Five now. Five squadrons. And he's done all right here. I can see <laughs> loads. Seven. Do these have minus one? Yeah, minus one. Yeah, I could do cover on this model here, but I don't want to. So we'll take it there. The barricades are not going to help us, the pipes. So uh, we're looking at minus one. It's going to be threes. Oh, please, no. Four wounds taken. That was worth shooting at them. God, four wounds. All right. We've got shield drones, so we'll drop to six wounds left. The start on eight plus two for the shield drone. Uh, so six wounds left on one of those models. Uh, five shots missed, which Mike can re-roll, because over the moment was placed in that unit at the start of his turn. <laughs> and just the one hit comes through. <laughs> Trying to wound. And yeah. doesn't wound. All right, so we're all good. Okay. Okay, Mike's on the hunt for these broadsides, and you might... We may well better bring one of these down. The bunker's going to unleash all of its firepower, so it's the heavy bolter array, and then crack shots come from uh, the missile pod on top. Mike's going to use a Patreon for this one. It's important enough. Sam Hermes. Yeah. Um, mm. So I'll do the bolter array first, because something's already taken wounds. Yeah. Yeah. Six wounds to try and get through here. Three, four, six. Is that still, obviously? Yeah. So, so threes. threes. Yep, Imperial Fist, as with this detachment, the Siege, Anvil Siege detachment, are you getting, uh, you, shooting becomes heavy and you sit still, so it's helping these out. And, and that's three rolls. Talk to Rang then. Yep, Mike's doing three rolls for a moment. And then strength five, toughness six, five. And um, three have got fruit. Oh, is it? Right, brilliant. And another one. So four, that's minus one, two damage. Okay. So technically, I'm getting and cover this time. There is uh, bits in between, so I can claim cover this time. Minus one, plus one, it's back up to twos. On four. Four, yeah. But another one snuck through. So another one taken. I'll drop to five, so that's half two. destroyed. Yeah, sorry, damage two, isn't it? Yeah, so it's an extra wound. So we're looking at uh, two wounds coming in. It'll drop me down to four wounds left. Almost got him. Crack shots now, two shots yeah. needing threes. Both hit. Uh, needing threes to wound. Threes to wound. Ooh. One makes it three. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it. It's got a CP on standby, yeah. okay. Minus two to minus one. Uh, three up. No, um, that's going to be nasty if it comes through. It will hurt. I'll spend the CP because the odds are in my favour that I'll pass it. I don't really need the CP for anything else, do we? No, nah, we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'll go back. I'll go Patronic on this one, and uh, we'll turn to a Xenos type friend, who will be uh, Jordan Russell, Eldar player. If anyone can get a three plus, it's the Eldar. Duh! Not today. Ah, it goes through, nothing I can do. And that's going to be D6 plus one. Yep, three plus to kill him. Two, duh. <laughs> okay, three wounds taken, drop it down to one wound left. Oh, he's going to use his CP. My CP, that's what I was waiting Can't on. resist. 
three he's done it oh boy <laughs> well done model removed one of the broadsides brought down i could be glad to see it gone just one yeah and actually killed one of the autarchs here that's midnight miniatures removed from play i was expecting that unit to last a lot longer but mike's been persistent with his firepower and it has been destroyed so one down two to go from that unit yeah so i'll send the shit to several turret. So if a turret's available, I take it it's going to go after the same target. Okay, yeah. Mike's going to try and hunt another one. So you've moved, looking for threes. Uh, twos. Still twos? Mm-hmm. Uh, Unless this skull is a two. Yeah. Is it heavy weapon? Nope. Oh, still twos then? Still twos. Oh. It'll get the heavy weapon because it's the... Yeah. The, the, the trade, so... Um, nice. Twos. Uh, yes, two fives. This is good. And then threes. You're not strength 12, are you, by any chance? No, strength 10. Oh, that's okay. Threes it is, then. One comes through. Would have been useful. Well, it's twin length. It's twin length, though. Very good. Uh, it's whole facing two. So it's still a two. It's just the one. Just the one. And I uh, really... Minus three to minus two. Minus three, minus two. Uh, four up save or a four plus invulnerable save. And we'll call upon some Tyranid Chitin here. Carl Roden. Four plus... Does he like the tower? Ah, not today. Uh, nothing I can do about it, so it's gone through. D6 plus one. Oh, plum hit. Five and one, six wounds taken, dropping down to four. Now it's official that squad's taken a battery. You're right, so that's the Ite Miara broadside uh, taking heavy damage, but still alive. Good shooting, not too bad here from the Imperial Fist. If only that second turret was in, Mike. Yes. Forgive me my slow painting with the... <laughs> model i couldn't put it in if he was there go ahead okay if it was a two-man squad two further hits would have come through another wound would have come through oh. okay Mike, mike's ones <laughs> i would have blocked it oh okay right that's right any other firepower left there's nothing else in range yeah everything else is nice. tucked away so mike's long range firepower is exposed and has been doing its job shooting and the other units are tucked away. So I think Mike's just uh, playing to the, the best advantage possible here at this stage. Space Marines are no rush. They're harvesting points in the corners of the table. So points are flowing through. Obviously no charges to take place. So we'll calculate points uh, coming through this turn as we wrap up. First turn of the game for the Marines. So end of turn, Mike's traded in on assassination. Uh, just to concede on that one. But to investigate signals has been a success. Four victory points coming through. So Space Marines off the mark points on the table we'll go on to tower turn one here as they plan to respond to this initial move from the space marines all right so on turn one here for the tower cards drawn attempting target mike said it needs to be the subjective here it's choosing one of the no man's land uh, objectives and it's five victory points if we can grab it which we have uh, and then behind enemy lines which uh, is difficult enough i'm just seeing if no, it doesn't say if you draw that card on turn one, anything, it's still in play, so no. I, I suppose there might be some units that could zip across quick enough to get in there and grab those points in some situations. But uh, that's the two cards in play. So movement here for the tower. Uh, we command re-rolled and got a nice uh, high result for our advance. Got us to here and we have grabbed this objective. So that's good for attempting target. But also for the start of the command phase as well, turn two onwards you can grab five victory points. Uh, hold on to these no man's land objectives the tower made a bid to grab this uh, but bear in mind across this flank here mike does uh, have dreadnoughts that he can respond to that with fire warriors they're all the ones they haven't made it to the objective got to there they did want to come on reroll their advance hammerheads have headed across this direction they're going to go after the heavier assets uh, for the imperial fist at the other end of the board with their rail guns so hammerheads both shifting across 10 inches in this direction and guns at the ready adds uh, Long strike blessed hammerhead number two of his ability. Remains stationary of these. Uh, Remains stationary of these. Uh, Shadow Sun's gone to here. Remember, she's got the reroll one bubble uh, to help out the units. The stealth teams come across to help out with uh, targeting units. And then the fire warriors have shifted across this direction again to spot units and to stay away from firepower from the intercessors. That's movement done for the towers. They await their reserves for fight with what we have here. We'll go on to their shooting phase next. So, so far, so good for the Marines. They haven't moved down to killing zones yet. They've, no. But we'll judge it at the end of this shooting phase here. But tower limited on targets. The, the main things we'd like to destroy are those dreadnoughts that are safely tucked away for now. 
no firepower at all from these. I think we'll start with the Hammerheads. With their rail guns, we'll fire their Seeker missiles and we'll pick on targets here. I'm just going to stop right there. Uh, Mike's going to do Overwatch for free with the bunker. Uh, it's a bit out of sync, but uh, it's just a friendly game. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, six is a good. Uh, Stealth's not going to help me. And there you go, nothing. Nothing. And then the. the um... Oh, crack shots, yeah. Yeah. Oh, one's hit. Yeah, no, <laughs> we didn't. Twin linked? No. No, no, it's no. Not. Not All right, that's Overwatch done. Get, you get it for free with the bunker uh, each <clears> turn. So I was going to fire just the rail gun. I'm going to put both seeker missiles. Bit of overkill, but I just want the target gone. So we're going to offload uh, long strike. He can't see the bunker from where he is, but he can see uh, through the terrain the servo turret. So that's going to be uh, his target. And we'll make a good job on this one, I think. We'll look for the longbow BB dice on the longbow BB tank. <laughs> Needing a... We'll check this one. Yeah, I'm on twos. As we're going to be guided in by these up here. That gives plus one to hit roll. We're shooting at a vehicle. You get plus one to hit roll anyway. Starting on three. So it's going to be a two for sure. With a solid rail gun shot. So just don't roll a one. Six. Okay. Uh, then we'll need a two. Okay. We're not panicking yet because we can re-roll that for the targeting array. That goes through. I believe it could be something nasty, yeah, on the rail gun. So, yeah, it's devastating wounds. So it's going to be eight wounds going straight through. Gone. Vaporised. Yep. Yeah, scrap metal. He's gone. Target, target gone. Rail gun shot. Both missiles are declared it's gone, but uh, it's long strike at extremely long range. With a double longbow BB stack. Let's remove that model from play. Okay, we'll then go to hammerhead number two. So it's going to offload its rail gun from one end of the ball to the next. And also two sticker missiles are going to go into the bunker here. Usually this thing's not shot at too much in games. Uh, but the tower are happy to, to shoot at this big thing uh, with their rail guns and missiles. So hammerhead number two will commit this to surely a tower friend somewhere. Don't all don't all speak at once. <clears throat> Travis and Jen. Tower players. So we'll go for it. The Jen shot will be the rail gun. So it's starting on fours. So being guided in by the stealth team. So that's plus one to the hit rolls. So I'm gonna be on a three. No, it could even be better because. I always end up running through this, but I want to get this right. So for the greater good, it gives you plus one to your ballistic skill. So yeah. let's just show you. Four, start on a four. Plus one to my ballistic skill means I hit on threes. And then if I go to the hammerhead rule for armor hunter. Ah, no, I don't think you're a vehicle. No. No, your fortification. If it was a vehicle such as the servo turret across there, it would have been plus one to the hit roll, yeah. which I would have got my twos to hit. So no, it is going to be threes now. Okay, so we get the hit. It would have got lethal hits as well uh, from the ability from long strike, but we rolled a four. Now I'm going to look for, right, now this is interesting. So your toughness... Twelve. Toughness twelve. Strength twenty. <laughs> Threes. It's gone under there again. Ooh. All right, okay. Uh, we'll use our targeting array to go for... I uh, know, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll not use a targeting array. That was a one, right? Yeah. So I'm going to use the ability that came from the stealth team. They can grant reroll ones to wound. So I'll use that from them and save the targeting array reroll. That's wise. Four. All right, it's gone through. So it's now down to an armor save. Michael, get cover. It's AP minus five. Two up save. Two up save. Hold it right there. Sorry about this, but you were lit up by a marker light unit, which means I get ignores cover. So it's just going to glide straight through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a big imperial square piece of butter. <laughs> it comes the, the tower knife. Damage of the oh, the ouch is five. Uh, 11 wounds, I think. Rail gun, devastating wounds, uh, D6 plus 6. Yeah, 
11. Three left. Yeah, ouch. That is, yep, yeah, that's nasty. That's officially nasty, yep. Yeah. That will that'll annoy the fists, but from a distance. <laughs> what can they do? Okay, add, oof, yes. Okay, so that's the gen shot. That's gen. Now we go for the Travis with a double missile shot. So these, again, will be threes. Right. I think, yeah, she's too far away. It's annoying. Shadow Sun. What would she be? Six. Yeah. From her base. Yeah, that's a shame. She would have granted real ones. Okay. So do we use a targeting array now? And I would say, yes, we'll use it now. So we'll try and get another hit. And we do. All right, so two hits come through. So now this is not as high caliber. We'll see what strength is. What is strength 14? Okay. Threes. Oh, one doesn't go through. Targeting rate has been used up. It's not a one, so it can't be re-rolled. It's just a straight one comes through. This one's minus three, though. Ignoring cover. So two up. Three up, four up, five plus to block this. D6 plus one damage as well, no pressure. <laughs> Come on, we're on. Three. Come on, we're on standby. Five plus. It's under number two. It's a two. I can see it. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do? I'd re-roll it, but <laughs> don't listen to a Tau advisor. He's going to go for it yeah. to give the bunker a chance. Oh, and he has, he stopped it. Good for you. Well done. All right. So, uh, stopping that damage from coming through. Hammerhead number two. Good shooting, though. It's, uh, three wounds left on the bunker. It's nearly been destroyed, but uh, on the command reroll, it has survived. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're using this team here to mark light up the bunker. Uh, going to fire the uh, broadsides. We're not going to fire the missiles. The plasma rifles are out of range. Just going to fire the heavy out rifles into the bunker to try and finish it off. And in threes, re-rolling ones, four, shadow up. I think that's the way to do it. We'll go for uh, a Xenos friend. Where's Vagabonks? I know he's um uh, he's a far sight player, so that's fine. We're looking for threes. Re-rolling one. This is good. Okay, so one's missed, but three have gone through. Uh there's no kind of lethals or anything, so we're just looking for the strength. The heavy rare rifle is strength 12, and your toughest 12. Yeah. So it's fours this time. It's devastating wounds. Six would be great. Six would be amazing. It's gone under here again. It's a bit of a magnet for dice. I think that's a six. It is a six. Okay, so four, five, and six. The devastating wounds would be D6 plus one. I'll just roll that just to make things yeah. quick and efficient. It is a one. So that's two wounds just go straight through, for sure. Just guaranteed, knocking down to one tedious wound left. And we're now going to try and wound you on... Uh, well, no, wounds have gone through. Yeah, yeah. Minus four. There's a marker light in the squad. Ignoring cover. Six. Sixes. Double six to survive. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, you can roll double ones. It needs to roll double six. <laughs> Nearly. Uh, so one makes it through. Six plus one, number seven wins. Bunker's gone. Does it detonate? Nope. Does not. All right, target destroyed. I may have done Mike a favour. It means... You've done me a massive favour. Because he's dragging all the skin. Because stayed away from them. Go through the gap. And it usually lasts a good while. I, I, I thought the bunker would be a, a, a target here in a tower game, and it's <clears throat> it has, but it's drawn a lot of firepower towards it and has kept uh, the tower guns away from other targets. So bunker gone, turret gone. It was the original aim for the tower to clear those two uh, units away, and they have. So we'll check to see if there's any other firepower uh, available, which I don't think there is. The main guns have fired. Uh, they, I know these are out of range. Out of range. Yeah, some firepower from them, I think, and that's about it. Uh, yeah, they can see. Uh, most of them can. Seven shots upstairs. Just need fours. Pretty good. Actually re-rolling ones as well. Nearly all of them hitting. Uh, strength five, you're top to six. Yeah. Five's to wound. Two wounds come through. Two saves of three plus. Yeah, three plus. Three is, yeah. And both blocks. That's it. I think that's tower firepower complete. Yeah, so turn comes to an end. Uh, points coming through. Uh, attempting target was achieved across here, so five points picked up. 
Uh, we have dumped the behind enemy line, so we can draw two fresh cards next turn. So five points to four at this very early stage in the game. We'll head on to the second turn of the game, which means reserves can start arriving. And the Imperial Fists, what do they do? Their long-range firepower, much of it has been cut down. So do they now manoeuvre out to take the fight to the tower? Mike's got a reserve unit that could arrive, or a couple of reserve units that could actually turn up uh, here on the board and tower have their reserves also. The game may well begin to escalate. We'll see. We'll go on to turn two for the Space Marines coming up next. Surely they must push forwards. These No Man's Land objectives must be taken. All right, we're on turn two here for the Space Marines. Optimistic still at this stage. Cards drawn, extend battle lines and engage in all fronts. So encouraging, the cards encouraging the fists to uh, push out and expand their boundaries. Dragnauts have come out to play. Redemptive shift across to here. Uh, able to present some firepower. And the uh, the retired Dragnauts moved out. It has got its multi melters in range as well. Again, to lay down some firepower and a bit of support from the armoured ATV. Again, getting itself in range to pour some firepower into these. Uh, the ideal situation would be to clear them out of the way just to stop the tower from picking up the points. Uh, five points available to them if they're able to hold their objective. Uh, even with just one model. And then around the other side of the board, uh, yeah, we're talking about reserves. We'll, we'll discuss those in just a moment. Uh, it's remaining stationary of these this time. Yeah. Yeah, so their firepower is available against multiple different targets. And if they sit still, they, they should be doing well enough with their shooting and winding. Then bikers, bikes on edge of these, and wants to hold them safely across here to manoeuvre them out, perhaps when the, the coast is clearer and some of the tower firepower has been removed and then advance move yeah which they can shoot anyway well and truly now onto the objective lieutenant leading the way and this no man's land objective has been grabbed so space range it's not it's not a, a full-on assault but uh, breakthroughs occurring across the board so it's like surges of movement in the right places on the tail but at the same time uh, preserving strength and keeping units out of trouble as well so tactical for sure as for reserves, Mike doesn't want to bring on Captain Parminion yet. Uh, he wants to come on later where he can uh, perhaps push deeper. Uh, to, to, oh, he's pointing at those here. Yeah, that's the ideal ambush target over there. Uh, and then you're, you are or you're not going to bring in the Inceptors. Yeah. Yes, there's a manoeuvre here that they could do, which would be quite potent. It's Meteoric Descent. Mike can bring it in, and he's got his eye on Shadow Sun yeah. to get him within that 12-inch bubble to then... Yeah, so Dacca. Meteoric Descent within three inches. Of her, yeah. And then yeah. shoot but her down. It's a three plus or anything, isn't it? It is three plus, yeah. It applies to all the reserves. And the answer is yes, they do come on. So Mike can make that move yeah. to get within the lone operative bubble. Yeah, so I'm trying to... Tuck him in there. He can arrive as long as he's over three inches away from enemy units. Yeah. So He's then got to watch out for Overwatch. That's what I'm trying to watch. So <laughs> so this is a... This is a tricky manoeuvre here. He's going to try and go for a well-placed assassination attempt. Which, by the way, he dumped the card. He regrets. Yeah, he could have uh, gone for that one. But. <clears throat> but this also helps me with the engaging all fronts. Right. It'll be the mini one. will be in three corners now. Uh -huh. um, okay. Yeah, so he'll position some models. which will check the line of sight for Overwatch. Then he can make a final choice. Yeah. So Mike's positioned them there. He's not so worried about Overwatch here. He's un un unlikely to do it just with a single shot. He's more worried about these. Uh, but he's positioned those in such a way where only one of them can see, uh, which means I'm not going to Overwatch. So I'm not going to Overwatch. I'll keep my CP. I've got two. Mike's got two. They've landed there. Movement's finished. An ambush here against Commander Shadow Sun is a good move if he's able to get past her armor. She does have six wounds. We're going to shooting phase next for the Imperial Fists. They preserve their numbers and their firepower is uh, potent enough. They have lost some, I guess. Bunker's gone, servo turret removed. But uh, Mike's still able to present some guns here. Yep. So it's not Meteoric Descent. It's gone for regular deep strike across there because there's no point. And uh, Mike would rather go for the charge if possible against Shadow Sun if the shooting doesn't work. Yeah. Should, do you want to shoot them first? Yeah, I'll start that first. Okay. And some Imperial players saying, pick me, pick me. <laughs> oh. Oh well. They get a lot of shots. They get sustained as well. They damage two, so Shadow Sun may well find herself in a fair bit of trouble here. She does have stealth. She does have an advanced guardian trench. So it's minus one to hit rolls, minus one to the wound roll against her, which will help. 
Yeah, I'm just trying to see here. They only get one assault bonus, so it's three shots each. Yeah. One, two, three. Nine shots. Sixes would be great. Um, Imperial help in the form of Chris Hine. Yep. Space Marine plant. <clears throat> so we're looking for lots of sixes. Yeah, sixes would be great. Now where's one? Oh, look at this. Threes. Actually need fours because of stealth. Stealth. Yeah. Stealth. Oh. Stealth. There's three threes in there that can be taken out. Oh, that's made a big difference. Big difference. Like Strength five, toughness four. Yeah. Threes to win becomes fours because of the guardian drone. Uh, twin linked. Oh, twin linked. And that has helped. It really has. Two becomes four. Minus, Minus one. one two damage each. Okay. Bit of cover by the looks of it. <clears throat> Going to keep to our three up save. I can't roll badly here. I really mustn't roll badly. We'll turn to the Thousand Suns in our desperation. The artist for winners, Vige. Oh, <gasps> man, it almost took us down. Um, just checking. I think I've survived with two wounds left. I found two, so four wounds come through. Uh, she's stealth, correct. And she has the advanced guardian drone. Each time range attack targets the bearer, so minus one to the wound draw. Yeah, she's got all of that. Fine, okay. I think it's her buffs have kept, kept her alive. Stealth stopped three shots from coming through. Sorry, I'm going to go down charge. Yep, Michael trying to finish her off in close combat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so four wounds taken. Shadow Sun almost taken out here, but she survives, but by a whisker. Bit of bolt rifle firepower going into... Can't see those. Going into these fire warriors across here. Looking for threes. Looking for threes becomes fours because the drones helped. It's just the one comes through. Uh, minus one, going through cover. Six is a block. Battle armor holds for the town. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll move on to the next bit of firepower. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm trying to think here whether to. Do you know what? St I'll start with that stuff over there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one. So the ATV. Yeah. So a multi melter shot and a bit of Dakar from the the guns as well. Just going into these. Doesn't really matter which order you go for in this no, one. I'll start with the ATV first. Two shots. This is multi after. Threes. And we'll go with... Uh, Nicholas Lucas. Yep. Imperial Planet. Three hits. Yeah, there's no kind of minuses going on here. Two hits come free. Strength nine. Threes to wound. Oh, sorry, it's toughness six. Yeah, two wounds come free. Yeah. Add... Minus four. Minus four. Shield generators, thankfully. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try and block these. Always, one always goes under here. Get a tray. Yes, I know, I know. It's in there somewhere. There it is. It's, it's in there. <laughs> oh dear. Get a tray. I know, I know. It's on the, it's on the list. Four. What does that mean? A block. It's a block. It's a block. Four plus. Invulnerable save. So one's made it through. Um, oh, it's so important. I'll go for the command reroll on this one. Yes, blocked both. <sighs> okay. Boy, oh boy. Okay, bit of Dakar then uh, from the little guns on the front. Yep, so two shots with the bolt rifles. Gosh, shields hold tower technology. That's two hits. Five to it. Uh, twin link. Wind makes it three. Yeah. Two up. Oh, you typical. Won't take it. Oh dear. I think we start on 10, so we drop down to 9. And it'll be this model here. This is the Vagabond squad here, surviving. What would you have got with the two multi melter rounds? Just to scratch the itch. Eight more wounds would have come through. That would have almost killed that. Okay, uh, Brutalis then. Multi melter shot. I think it's two, but it's twin linked. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Two shots, then. Threes. Threes. Two hits. Good shooting. Uh, Three's threes. twin. Twin linked. Both go through. Minus four. Okay. Invulnerable saves again. We do block one. <clears throat> Thankfully. 
Nothing I can do about this. Straight up roll. D6. D6. Give me the six. Yeah, it's ain't high. Four's no. all right. Four's not bad. Five points left. Something for the Redemptor to try and finish off. Okay, yeah, Redemptor Dreadnought. The only thing in range is the Macroplasma Incinerator. Five wins left on this thing to try and bring it down. Michael Fryer. Michael Fryer, Die Hard Space Brains. Commander of the Redeemers. Not much Die Hard. Three shots. <laughs> Max, last chance here. Come on, reroll. I just want to kill one. No, I don't want to come on, I have something else <laughs> planned for it, but if I had a command rerolled it. I would have doubled to four. But anyway. Two <laughs> two shots and threes. Joe on the way up here, I know I was playing Imperial Fists. And I, I always roll badly for the first roll for the incinerator. And I always re-roll it and get higher. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not going to do it this time. I'm just going to go with the dice. Oh, he's pre-game plan. Oh, sorry, yeah, you're on D6 plus one, plus one attack. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, so you've got three hits. Three hits. Toughness six. So three's the one. Three's to wound. Three oh, wound. Two. Minus four flat three. Four ups. Blocks one, typical. <clears throat> three wounds taken. Yeah. Dropping down to two. Frustratingly, and that's it. So that's firepower from him finished. You could maybe divert some firepower from these upstairs if you want to send them down here. Even if you kill that one, I still have this model on the objective, but it's up to Mike what he wants to do. But firepower is complete over in this sector. Right, interesting. Okay, what's the stratagem called you've used? Um, <clears throat> no threat, too great. Okay, so it's Anvil Siege Force, unique stratagem for them. Yeah. Grant of your wounds against. Monsters and vehicles? Yeah. Yeah, so he's using it on the heavy intercessors. He may well split. So that's been granted to his unit, so yeah. they get the rerolls. It's not having to pick one of the enemy units. Mike's attempts to split here and try and bring down a model from each of the broadside squads, which would cut down to our firepower really yeah. good. And I think that's what I want to do, because we've measured up and checked the two heavy boulders mm -hmm. are in range and can see. Don't they? Or you could go for one of each, because they're damaged two. Yeah. Well, it might think about how he wants to split his firepower here. They're splitting, and then they're splitting, splitting. I don't want to split, split, split. Yeah. So I'll put the two heavies. He wants to do a good yeah, job down there. There, and then the rest. The rest is going down there. The there was another strategy you could use, one CP for five pluses for criticals, but Mike doesn't have enough CP. Yeah, everything in the unit would then get sustained, and it goes off in fives. But, yeah. yeah, good. Not too bad stratagems available for the, <laughs> the Anvil Siege Force, but you need the CP to do it. You do. Unfortunately, I didn't. Okay. Um, so the heavy boulders into here, yeah. So six shots. And nice. do you wish to boost with a friend? Yes, Ray Cross. Oh, he's annoyed. <laughs> Ray's a space marine player, so Ray will gladly help. And Ray is on the board somewhere as well, a chaplain on foot, I believe. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. over here talking to Frank. <laughs> okay, right, go ahead. Gathering the intel, so uh, head on threes now because we're in the station Okay. Are you hitting on twos? No, because this is the heavy boulder. So it's fours to threes. Got it. The heavy bolt rifles will be threes to twos. So everything else I'm going to shoot next will be on twos. Uh -huh. And then that's sustain hits one. Okay. <clears throat> so far, so good. So this is strength five, toughness six. Fives, um, because they already have the heavy keyword. Plus one, one to the wound. wound roll. So Force to wound re-rollable. All of a sudden, that's not too bad, yeah. And re-roll those three. The problem's my armor. Mike's done well. He's got four. It's minus mm. one, add, but going for a load of cover, plus one again, which will take us back to twos. Yeah, just needed to fill one. Yeah. We'll torture Mike here, roll one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Six. There you go. You're CP, yeah? Oh man, look at that. Yeah, well done. All right. Torture for self. Model destroyed. And two wounds on another. So dropping down to. That's actually shield drone. So we're going to take away those two. So the model's broken in. I'll just go through to there. One of them's a Marcus. It actually starts on nine. So I'm actually going to drop him down, not to eight, but to seven, just to get this right. 
Well done. Good shooting. Yeah, I should be on one CP, not two. So I command rerolled and uh, one more save. Correct. So, yes. Uh, moving on to firepower upstairs. They can all see. Yeah. So that's going to be 14 shots. Uh, sorry, 16 shots. Yeah, so. Two. Two's mine. Yeah. Two if Mike had sustained, yeah, I would have been good. <laughs> it would have been amazing. Oh, it would have been incredible. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We've added about another 10 dice to that yeah. pile. Yeah. I can see the value of this, this trash. Seven. Seven, another seven hits, yeah. Would have been. <clears throat> Not too bad here from the heavy intercessors, and they're cheaper now as well, in <clears throat> points. <clears throat> yep. Strength five, toughness six. Really. Yeah. Plus one. Fours to wound. Rerollable. And rerollable because of the shots. Yeah. Uh -huh. As well as rerollable. All right. You need it against the top of target. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not so good, but there's some coming through. It's definitely helping. Mm -hmm. Minus one cover, no, because I'm putting it on the model in front, so no. So it's nine. So it's nine saves, a three plus. Now I will have to slow down here because as I will move on to cover the next model. So I'm going to do four saves here, I need threes. Two wounds come through, this is good. I'm going to roll two more, pass those. Two more, pass those. I live, I live. Two wounds taken. I'm holding well, it's a Tami holding here, dropping down to two wounds left on that broadside. Okay, and with that, shooting comes to an end. So you can see the heavy intercessors, that's the position they've taken, just pouring down the firepower uh, here against the tower. So, uh, plunging fire, by the way, Mike's not, not quite high enough. It look high enough on the ball, but still not quite high enough to get the extra eight minus one. We really do need the train to be, like on there, you get it, I think. And maybe on top of this special platform that I banged. <laughs> There's not too many places you can purchase to get that bonus. Uh, oh, a simple charge. Yeah. Leading a nine. Seven. No. And no, no, CP. no CP. Okay. End of turn. We'll calculate and see what points have come through here. Space Marines are going after the tower, but it's a measured approach from them. Sensible enough, I think. But further units have been exposed to tower firepower. Dreadnoughts have come out to play. Tower need to try and deal with that. Crucially, the tower have retained control of this objective, but across the other side, Mike's gained one. So the battle's uh, evenly spread at this stage, but perhaps we can gauge the game better at the end of tower turn two. So end of turn, points not too bad. Three points for engaging all fronts. One, two, three table quarters, thanks to the arrival of the Inceptors, proving their use already. Scorpions... They have a second squad in the list. Two coming down would be pretty good for rambushing. But anyway, three points picked up for that. Two points because Mike holds his home objective at the start of his turn. And then five points to extend battle lines. That was fulfilled, I take it, because of the yeah, intercessors right. across there being led by the lieutenant. So points flowing in here, helpfully enough. For the fists, 14 points to them. Five points to the tower. Uh, but Tau are going to pick up seven straight away. Five here and two over there. Uh, and then they've got their secondaries. And a whole turn of manoeuvring and shooting. We'll go on to Tau turn two coming up next. All right, so movement done for the Tau. Uh, the commander's landed here just to investigate how the previous commander, Commander Coldstar, was slain. So uh, Ghost Tide's turned up right on schedule. We did roll up three plus and rolled a three. Uh, and another uh, deep strike unit has arrived as well. The crisis, the support crisis battle suit team with the missile pods has landed over there again, rolling a three plus. So not delayed by uh, the special rule uh, here in this game, but it could easily have gone the other way with a couple of uh, ones and twos. So our heads have now pulled across in this direction. Uh, the only target for him really is the inceptors across there, but the main aim was to get long strike around here. You can see through to the brutalist dragnaut. Fire Warriors holding or manoeuvring onto this. They'll go for cleanse for our uh, secondary uh, and then hold in position uh, with the lone broadside. Arriving from reserves, the drones don't really count here. It's the models, so we place them uh, on here. 
at trying to get them and successfully get them in range 12 for our fusion blasters. Remember, we've got a fusion blaster on each, a plasma rifle on each, and also a cyclic iron blaster on each of those models. And it's exemplar of the Kuyans. The sustained hits will kick in at turn two onwards uh, with Ghost Tired. Then across the other side, we'll go around the other side of the board and you can see the, the rest of the town manoeuvring. So across here, broadsides remain stationary, fire warriors remain stationary, they do have targets. The stealth team's moved up at, in support, anticipating and hoping that the commander arrived, which he did. Uh, and then strung out across here, I'm just trying to weave in between nine inches between these two units, which we've managed to do. So they've turned up here. This is the missile pod team. Uh, and then Shadow Sun's moved out aggressively against these. She'll operate over in this corner and stay away from the rest of the Imperial Fist firepower. So Fire Warriors as well pushing through in our bid to go after this objective. Ambition here from the tower, for sure. We'll go on to the shooting phase next. So I've, I've looked at the firepower. I want to start with these first because there's other shots that could come in against these. But if I do them first, Mike will take the lead models and I'll lose range and options with those. So I want to max out with them. We'll do this landing here with Ghost Tide and his six-man squad. Six crisis battles, it's 400-point unit, plus the commanders. It's 480 points there, plus the upgrade. It's a 500 points. There's a quarter of the army just dropped in the center of the table, just to give Mike an idea of uh, the weight of this uh, tower attack with these crisis battle suits. So we're going to work our way through the weapons. Uh, they're going to be guided in by the stealth team to link up with them, to give them their reroll uh, ones to wound. The commander's going to give them reroll ones to hit. And then plus one to hit rolls, or plus one to the ballistic skill coming in because they've been uh, light, marker lighted up. So we'll make a start here. It's the one of each combination uh, with this team. So we're going to start with the fusion blasters from the regular squad, so six of them. We'll bless this with, I know the dice to use for this one. It will be, it's the Nate Miller dice. Looking for threes. Three all in ones. Right, a number of people said, don't forget, don't forget yet. Yeah, so sixes are sustained hits of two because of uh, the Kuyan kicking in and turn early. Uh, it's sustained hits one. If the target's been lit up, uh, then it's sustained hits two. So that's two extra hits coming through with fusion blasters. This is nasty stuff. We're now looking for threes to wound. And I can see the use of the stealth team. Rerolling ones. That's helped another one come through. We're ignoring cover. And this is going to be a P minus four, I believe, on seven dice. Strength nine, minus four, D6 damage. It's exceptionally nasty here. There's nothing Mike can do. There's armor of contempt, but it's not going to be worth it here. So it's D6 damage each time. So slain one, slain two, three, four, five. Uh, six will be on this one. Yeah, six in total, brought down by fusion guns from that squad. Uh, yeah, we'll move on to uh, ouch, plasma rifles. Boy, oh boy, we're now looking for threes, re-rolling ones. The sixes pop. Four extra hits, sustained hits of two. Yeah, well, this is uh, this is an insane level of firepower here. And then we're looking for uh, three stoined. We are only once. And potentially a wipeout here. The plasma rifle is potent. It's a minus three, strength eight, and straight three damage. So it's going to be... Seven saves of six plus. This squad's gone. Yeah, some sixes in there to block. Triple six, in fact. So, but it is just enough to destroy them, so they're gone. In one fell swoop. Nasty stuff from this tower squad. Particularly. Mm -hmm. Ouch, yeah. Uh, you still need to go hazardous. Yes. Mike's uh, yes. <laughs> is his parting gesture. I have to roll hazardous because even though I didn't fire the weapon and get to it, it is simultaneous. 
and Mike's been reading the rules commentary as well, keeping up to date with the latest. To, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have to. So I'm going to roll six dice plus the one for the commander because we'd have done him as well. And uh, if I had known the potency of that, I probably wouldn't have gone super cyclic. But anyway, uh, I, I would declare that I would have gone. Uh, so I'm going to roll dice here and try not to roll once, which we do get two, which means I'm going to lose a model, I reckon, because it's three mortal wounds a time. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're vehicle. Uh, so we take three mortal wounds times two, six wounds. And it's uh, a four-way model with two shield drones, it's six wounds, so that's all absorbed and one model lost. But uh, we'll take that exchange, no problem at all. But a mark made for sure, ghost side uh, going aggressive, not close combat, but withering firepower here from the tower. Okay, sort of a next generation feel about that combination across there. So you can keep a look out for that. We're currently working on the tower list, there's a new list being proposed over on channel membership here, and that, that's part of it across there, so we've witnessed uh, part of the next generation uh, here for the tower. So, next, we're going to fire Long Strike with a single shot coming through against the Brutalis Dregnaut. What's the AP on? Minus five. We'll light it up with this squad here. So, it's a mark light in the squad, so ignore cover. Minus five. Ignore cover. Yeah. Yeesh. So we're hitting on twos. I'm gonna pick a friend and Michael Jemin for this one. Do you have smoke keyword? No, just wondering. Doesn't make much difference. But... No. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> just gonna run through this again to make sure I got it right. I start on a three. I'm going to add plus one to my ballistic skill and go up to a two up. And I'm also on plus one to the hit roll as well because I'm shooting at a vehicle, so it's definitely on twos. So we'll go ahead with this one here. And we rolled a one. <laughs> okay. Uh, we will use our reroll ability for targeting array. Got a four. Okay, so that comes through. Now try and wound on a three. Toughness 10. We got toughness 10. Yeah. Strength 20. Twos. Goes through. Uh, D6 plus 6. It's a 5. 11 wounds caused on the Dreadnought. It's down not one, one shot, one kill. Down. <laughs> down to one wound left. I was hoping you'd roll low. The 6. <laughs> hoping you'd roll the The 1, sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, one wound left on the Brutalis. Plum hit from uh, Long Strike here. Tower getting mean with their firepower. It's happened in the various editions uh, in the history of the channel. They've ebbed and flowed, but we're sensing that the tide is in at the moment for the tower. Mike's saying this game is just a friendly one, but it's good recon uh, here in this, <laughs> this battle to anticipate what uh, you may have to face against uh, the tower as they revamp and prepare for the league. There's very ambitious factions at the moment on the channel. Imperial Fists are one of them, of their new Captain Parmenium, but so too the Tower now, revamping and rearming as quickly as they can, uh, and they want to make their bid for the Channel Crown. Imagine the Tower Commander uh, taking the, nope. the Crown on the Channel. It could happen, for sure, Commander Ghost Tide. Uh, it's confident now with his new battle suit combination, and there's reinforcements on the way uh, for this Tower list. What's he got? He's got a bad... So he's got a bad oh a badens observing. <laughs> yes. Okay. Right. So as uh, so I'm gonna fire everything I have into this. I'll save I'll put a missile into that. I'm gonna fire the missile from me. I might regret this, but I'll do split fire, so I'm gonna put that into there. But everything else is gonna go into that dreadnought. I shouldn't split, but I will. Yeah. Can't split. No, don't split. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll fire everything into him. I can't. I just too too nervous. Brutalis has to go. I've seen what it can do. It needs to be removed. So we'll go for the high yield missile pod first of all. Everything's been declared though. But high yield missile pod first. Six shots. 
Lean fours, no kind of help available for us. And no sustained or anything yet, we're all on normal turn two, so three hits come through. And not getting much here, and we're looking at fives to wind. Nothing, twin linked. <gasps> Nothing. Seeker missile will do it now. Help, missed, done, gone. Uh oh, and then we're now on uh, the Seeker missiles or the twin that smart missile system. Three shots. A hit. This is terrible. <gasps> nothing. It's twin link though. Still nothing. Absolutely nothing from him. We'll offload some pulse rifle firepower into this to try and pick off a wound from this Brutalis. So what I'm trying to do is weigh up on cleanse uh, here. Uh, it says, I'm free to choose now. I can either shoot or I can cleanse. It's declared in your shooting phase. You can select one or more units from your army. They're not battle shocked. So do I cleanse or do I not with these? Um, so I'll... S I'll stick to the original plan. I said I was going to cleanse, so I'll stick with it. Brutalis Drag not escapes, and we'll cleanse across there. That's firepower from here complete. Um, so we'll now shift our attention to the other side of the board. So next bit of firepower, going to use the Fire Warriors across the other side. Going to take the Missile Pod team and offload all of its firepower into the uh, regular Intercessor squad. So these are triple Missile Pods on this combination. So Missile Pods are two shots each, so it's going to be six shots per Unit, or per model, sorry. I've been guided in, so we have threes. There's no kind of rerolls, no kind of sustained going on with them. Sh yes, but Shadow Sun, we did put her in range. Did, yeah. yeah, so reroll ones for my shooting, at least. So, oh, definitely going to commit this to a friend. <laughs> uh, running out of, oh, we'll go Chris Kamiski just so we can get some erratic results here. <laughs> And it's all quite average, really. We'll reroll ones. That helps. Thank you, Shadow Sun. And actually on threes, so actually, it's an exceptionally good roll. Just two misses. I think I'm threes to wound. Coming in at strength seven. Mm -hmm. Missile pod strength seven. Yeah, minus one. And ignoring cover. Threes to wound. No kind of rerolls available. And again, it's a good enough roll. It's, it's, uh, it's decent enough. A dozen wounds have come through. So it's going to be 12 saves of 4+. plus. Each one's damage 2. So this could has the, the potency to halve the squad. But I doubt they'll wipe them out. Patronic Friend. There's 4 yeah. left. They're all Imperial players. Dave Humphreys. Admec. That'll do. Uh, four pluses, did you yeah, say? Yeah, fours, yeah. One I should have armoured. No, do it now. There's some fours and fives and sixes in there. Six. It's bang on average. And I'm glad I didn't armour because it only made a difference once. Okay. Uh, six models slain. Michael take from the back and maintain control of the objective. Like so. So there was the opportunity to spend two CP and make a move with those, jump 10 and land on the objective. Don't really see the real need to do that. I, what I'm tempted to do is actually go for uh, a charge with the fire warriors against the lieutenant and try and flood the objective and capture it that way. So we'll, we'll do that, I think. So we'll not spend the two CP, I'll save them. In which case, I'd, I'll, I'll take that team that just observed and shoot with them into that. To target no 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 I'll shoot with these first because I can for Mike removes my models from play I'll shoot with these up here they are in range so 10 shots from here Cadre Five Blade gives them an extra one we'll do his shooting in a minute as well and there's a DS8 tactical support turret has been deployed because it remains stationary so uh, they're going to shoot but they'll, they'll be the guiding unit for Hamed number two against that target over there just going to declare that now but we'll go for uh, our shooting over there so we're looking for We're in range for real ones. We're looking for fours because we're not guided ourselves. Rerolling our ones, taking away the ones, twos, and threes, which is all those. 
Uh, three to win. It's not bad. Uh, space Marines will get their three up saves though. Ten saves of three plus on the regular intercessors. Pulse rifle firepower coming in here. Three ups. Okay. That's enough to kill one. Mm. Have to kill two. Two slain. Okay. Uh, we'll also fire the cadre fire blade. He gets a pulse rifle shot. I, I believe he's going to get the buff of his own ability, so it become two shots. I need threes. Two hits come through. Three to wound. One wound comes through. And his damage two. Three ups up. Pass that one. Okay. Uh, and the DS8 tactical support turret. Two shots. One hit comes through. Three to wound. Yep. Yeah. And always save three plus. Just damage one, and picked off a wound. Okay, so one wound caused. Uh, we'll then do, uh, these are paired up, so we'll go uh, across here with Hammerhead number two. It's got offload everything it has uh, into uh, the Inceptors. So we'll go for our gun first. Missed. I will do use our uh, targeting array ability. And we get the hit. Twos for a kill. Failed. I would like to see one of them gone, so we'll command reroll. Got him, so one model can go. I really want to see those removed from there, so I'm trying to justify my overkill there with a. The... Oh no! Oh, Mike's just done a sneak. <laughs> <laughs> He's taken the model out. He could. Oh, no! Okay. Carry on. Sorry, but explain. <laughs> he took the he took the model there that he could see. Now I can't see. He's just shut down there. The broadside firepower. Nice. Just fine. Let's plan the game. Just we keep do, going. We do, we do friendly games, and you tell me not to tell you. Yeah, no, no. We're, we're, we're pretending it's a serious one. It's fine, but it's still friendly. <laughs> <laughs> we go for a uh, twin smart missile system on the yeah, totally the wrong thing here. Twin smart missile system. Three shots. Needing threes because we're guided. It could even be twos because it's a heavy weapon. It's not. Carry on. Threes to end. Twin linked. It's under there and it's a two. Uh, just the one comes through, no minus. So one save with three plus. Oh. Nope. All right. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I need to check that footage. You're not toughness four, you're toughness six. Six, yeah. Yeah, that was a three twin, so that's twin linked. I still get to re-roll it. And a five is enough. Strength five, top of the six. Yeah. One save. Which you... Which I rolled. Uh, Fine. Yeah. Uh, correct. So... Many ones? Just the one. One, yeah. Yeah, one wound taken. Okay. It's all right. I can still see around the corner there. It's no problem. So we'll get our shooting. So that's him done. Uh, all the smart missile systems have been... Oh, sick of myself, sorry, I've been uh, fused up on these. So, broadsides, I'll just check to see what he can see. All of his firepower is going to go across there. So, that model's totally out of it, no target at all. He can see through to those. Uh, it's going to be guided in by Shadow Sun on top. Nice. Uh, so, we're looking at, and stationary as well. Oh, hang on a second, all of a sudden, our firepower is... Pretty good actually, because we're starting at fours, uh, heavy for heavy air rifle, and guided. So we're actually going to twos, two shots to the heavy air rifle. This could actually pick them off if we get the hits, which we don't. Ah, yeah, yeah. She's too far away. Six. <laughs> it's her base, not the drones. Yeah, that's... he's checking. He's looking. It's. Yeah, just out. Yeah, it looks out from here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's out. Oh, close though, close. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, just the one hit comes through. Not much I can do. Twos to wound, I believe, because we're strength. Twelve. Yep. Minus four, ignoring cover. D six plus one is enough to pick yeah. off two wounds. Okay. Uh, Seeker missile. Oh, yeah, missed on a one. 
Uh, oh, twin plasma rifle. That's a hit. Threes. Oh, no. Right. Okay, we'll leave it. We'll, we'll go over to Shadow Sun uh, for her shooting. Her two fusion... High-energy fusion blasters could be enough for range 18. So we've got ourselves within the, the Bane range. That's why I got closer. Uh, just one attack each. So two shots. Needing twos. Two hits. Nice. Uh, threes. One comes through. Um, A minus four. You're in the open. D6. Plus two is an auto kill because it's melted two. Got it. Plum kill. No roll up required. And just about, but we have got target destroyed over in that corner. Thanks to Shadow Sun finishing off the last model. Okay, looking around, and I think firepower is now complete here for the tower. It's been deadly enough. It started off across here, wiping out. Uh, the heavy intercessors which is usually a unit that can tank a lot of firepower coming through but uh, a nasty landing here revengeful tower commander uh, kitted out with a 400 point crisis battlesuit unit causing trouble we'll calculate points here no 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 charges the fire warriors emboldened here yeah they're going to go for the charge four wasn't you know? yeah uh, five I just think, yes, I'll, yeah, I'll think about this one, because I think Mike's got the potency to, <laughs> to destroy them. I, I think it's worth it if I can flood this, lose half the squad and still win out on OC control, is what I'm kind of thinking. It's got a fist here. The sergeant was saying it's got a fist. That's, that's the loadout for these. Um, so I think Mike could half my squad, but I'm OC2. That could still be enough for me to disrupt this. I think in the overall scheme of things, it's well worth going for. It's a five inch charge, so I'll roll this up. This charge will go ahead. So before we do this, I'm gonna ask a question. Uh, you can let us know in the comment section below. Uh, the grenade stratagem, they have the grenades keyword. I'm not gonna do this. I'm just gonna theorize uh, here and you can let us know just for future reference. Um, and there's two questions. The first one is, uh, these have the grenades keyword. I could use the uh, rule book stratagem grenades and I can roll up, I think, six dice and fours, mortal wounds. Really, really good in this situation. Uh, can I do it at the in the shooting phase, but after they've done their regular shooting? Can I do it out of sync? Can I uh, fire with a unit, come back to it later on and say I want to use the grenade stratagem on it? So that's the first question. Um, and and the second question, <laughs> I can't remember what it was. If I, if I remember what it was, I'll come back to it. So, um, yeah, can you use the grenade trash to out of sync? Could I do it at this point, at the end of my shooting phase, or have I missed the opportunity? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you use the... That's the other question. Can you use the grenade trash to and still fire all your other weapons as well? Yeah. You can? Yeah. All right, so you can do that. I could fire all my staff, observe, and then chuck grenades. But can I do it out of sync? I don't think I can, so I'm not going to do it. But it's a stratagem you play on a unit. Perhaps the wording of the stratagem will tell us. Well, the difference, if you had used it, you, you'd, you'd have cleared the last two. Huge difference. <laughs> that would have cleared all them new buildings, though. That's a massive yeah. tactical advantage. Well, well, well. We could answer our own question here. So it's done, it's in your shooting phase. One grenade unit from your army that is not within engagement range of enemy units and has not been selected to shoot this phase. There you go, I've already shot. So I've answered my own question. So you've got to keep that in mind. Um, so I take it by the wording of this that you do the grenade stratagem first and then shoot afterwards of all your other stuff. Yeah. Fantastic. It just gives Tower Fire Warriors a little bit of a nip because that's huge, what could have happened. But hasn't. We're now trying to charge and save our grenades. And it's a nine inch charge. They're enthusiastic enough. We're going to flood around this objective. If we do well enough, samurai swords drawn, we could try and pick off one wound and at least try and bring down one of the marines. So they've gone in. There's another charge, so we'll just move on to this one uh, here. So we're looking at a total of nine attacks, name fives. 
Good for you to, uh, yes, not fours, fives and sixes. I'm going to try and wound on a five or a six. And we get one. We kicked one of the Marines in the shins. Mike says, puh, <laughs> to the Tau. There you go, that's a good summary of Tau combat. That's why we live by the gun, <laughs> not by the sword. <laughs> just checking their all to see if there's anything else I got for them, but there's nothing at all. That's, uh, that's it, just... Uh, one wing coming through and saved. So Mike's going to do his attack. So we've got a power fist and a sergeant. Yeah, so I'll get, I'll get the plus combat overlay first. Okay. Yeah, a uh, regular combat blade from this marine just here. So threes. Yeah, that's three three Uh oh. Uh -huh. Threes to wind. Two come through. That's all right. Uh, two saves of four plus. Foul both. Worst possible result. Okay, two slain so far. Mike wants to tip the OC control back in his favour. Sergeant. Sergeant with the power fist. Two, oh, threes in the power fist? Yeah. Oh, boy. Do you know how it's a four plus with the thunder? Thunder hammer. Yeah. All right, cool. Twos. Twos. For wounds, yeah, because we might get a save. Maybe minus three. Yeah, minus, oh, sorry, minus two. Minus yeah. two, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sixes, come on, Tau. Tau, va. Oh, three more gone. Ouch, 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 ouch. One, two, three. He's going to do it. Uh, now, Lieutenant. Lieutenant yes. Cletus. Four. One, twos. Oh. That's lethal. Oh. And then. Twos. twos. Um, maybe you left. Yeah, you're. Well, no, you do need to make a choice yeah. now. Yes. So I'll be saving on sixes. Um, if I roll a six, I would have control. Yeah. Because you're OC two yeah. and OC one. So five. It's currently five v's eight. If you kill one, which is most likely to, it'll be five against six. You really want the two kills to go through. Show them win on OC control. Come on, reroll. Need a two plus. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. That's crazy. Oh, yes, it goes through. Okay, so I now need a double six. Double. Oh. So the CP was worth it. It was, yeah. You didn't need it to. Really did. So looking at something like that, the drone doesn't mean anything. And Mike has just about managed to regain control of this <clears throat> objective or retain control of this objective as the fire war is going. So my little tactic uh, hasn't worked out here. Maybe should have spent the 2 CP to drift over to here. These are OC2 as well, so that really could have helped tip things. But a uh, little strategy hasn't worked here, and Imperial Fists uh, control this objective just about. Okay, so no further charges take place, no further combats. Turns come, turn has come to an end. Uh, the points come in for the tower. We did do the cleanse down here. It's worth three victory points, just on the one objective. Um, then plus the seven for primaries takes us to 15. The tower have got themselves... Just the one point ahead. But the damage that they've caused has been a lot heavier. Uh, they've cut a swathe through the Imperial Fists uh, across here. And so in that regard, uh, look to be dominating the table at this stage. They've cleared their back lines as well. But the Space Marines are bravely fighting on. Lieutenant squad across there do retain control of that objective. So Michael uh, reaping the points that five points, two points the home objectives. So there's points lined up here for the Imperial Fists. Uh, but they are being hunted here by this uh, revamped experimental Tau force. We'll go on to turn three now. The middle stage of the game for the Imperial Fist. Hold on a second. I said that we tipped the game in our favour. Captain Parmenian is to arrive on the ball. This is turn three, mm -hmm. so he will turn up. He will not be delayed. And I'm sure he would like to turn up right now. We're going to turn three for the Space Marines.
Oh dear, I didn't see it coming. I saw that coming, but I didn't see what he's done here. So good maneuvering from Mike. He's he's, he's like poison being drawn from a wound. He's uh, drawn out our Overwatch here with the Brutalis. It's a sad way to go uh, for him. Not that he's gone already, but we we be most likely will go because we're going to offload everything we have on Overwatch against him. But it makes me use up Overwatch, which frees up Mike's bikes to swing around very very quickly to go for the charge, which they can do. Uh, and also Captain Parmenian to avoid Overwatch, which Mike didn't want as he arrives on the board uh, because the Brutalis Dragnaught is going to do that. So good manoeuvring here. Mike's uh, sacrificing tactically the Dragnaught. If it's destroyed, uh, to open the way up because you can only Overwatch once in a turn, right? So I can't do it in the charge phase, but we'll do it now for sure against this Brutalis Dragnaught. So I did want that boys to drop in the back, but you've blocked... Along these lines here. Yeah, we'll check to see where Captain Parmenian can arrive. But we'll go for plasma rifles. Um, because we know they're all in range. I've lost the model, so it's going to be five of them. I might not get this track down here, so we've got to be, got to be careful. Don't forget your hazardous as well. And hazardous as well. Uh, damage two, fives, minus one. We'll not go hazardous on these for this one. We'll just go for normal low caliber. So sixes would be amazing. And we get none. Uh-oh, we're your ones. Nothing. That's the plasma rifles. A plasma rifle from uh, the commander. Failed. We'll check range. I don't think we've got all of them in range here for fusion blasters. All right, range 12. We're all in. So we'll go for five fusions. Come on. We're your ones. Come on. That's the result we're after. But you're not marker lighted up though. No. So it's only sustained one. Interesting. We'll do the uh, the captain now, the uh, the commander. <laughs> 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 Alright, so uh, we're now looking at five to wind. One of these would be great. Three is amazing. Three go through. Uh, minus four. He's Puts me in the sixes. Yeah, sixes. There's not much else Mike can do. Three of them, yeah? Three of them. Two ones and a six. No, it's two go through. And the damage is eight. And it doesn't blow up. All right, Brutalis Dragnaught is... I think he knew he was going to go. And that just shows what a noble character he is. A Dragnaught giving his life for his brethren. So target destroyed. Mike's... It's bait. No, we took it. We had to take it because that thing charging in might could go for tank shock. Its own built-in mortal wounds plus the crushing claws could cause massive trouble for that squad. So I don't want to land on the board, make an impression, and then get munched. <laughs> so we've we've had to go for the dreadnought. We've brought it down, but it opens the door for two of Mike's units to make their manoeuvres. So manoeuvring's finished here from the Imperial Fists. Area denial and deploy teleport homer is the two secondaries. Not ideal. Uh, here, but Mike will press on. So arriving from reserve, it's Captain Parmenian's turned up here to lay down some firepower here with the melter, multi-melters and melter rifles. ATVs uh, moved on to the objective just to get a, some kind of model in position on that. Redemptive Dreadnoughts pushed through. Uh, sticky objective with the intercessors, so they've moved off in force, uh, led by the chaplain in this direction to support the Dreadnought. Yeah, they advanced. They advanced as well, but they can obviously still shoot. Uh, but Mike's amassing a force now to go for this flank uh, over here. Then uh, round here. Oh, well, Lieutenant's ability. Full back. Yep. Okay, right. So pull, pull him back out of close combat, sheltering here, and then they can shoot. It's like a priority. Yeah, there's two abilities. There's lethal hits plus the other ability from him. Oh, and then the bikers have made their move. So there is a charge. It's a bit of a distance, but they could get in there against the Fire Warriors, or sorry, against the Crisis Battlesuit team. That's movement done here. Mike saying his casualty list is growing. Uh, perhaps the last uh, attempt here from the Imperial Fist to try and switch this game around. We'll see. We'll go into shooting phase next. Yeah, it's a shorter charge because you're fighting vertically. That's fine. It's all good. So I reckon it's a, a six-inch charge. So it's quite doable from the bikes. Anyway, shooting. And yep. it's potent enough with the arrival of these. <clears throat> yeah. Now it's only 18 inches, so there's two, there's four in range of here, and the back two are out of range, so they'll go into him. Into him, yeah. Split fire. Yeah. 
Go I'm ahead. Right. And where is your token of hatred? Oh, right, on them. Sorry, silly me. No, it's only because <laughs> they make Because the charge. bikes for yeah. charging combat and so on. Yeah. yeah. So Ned already have the reroll hits, wounds, and damage. Yeah. Because they have the reroll keyword. So for the fists, the mission's quite simple. They've got to drive the tower off of the No Man's Land objectives. Should be quite straightforward to cross there. This is a bit more effort, but Mike's a mass enough uh, units here, especially firepower to try and uh, drive the tower off of this objective. Okay, so this game, it's not over yet. Mike does well. So you're going to use the Valhalla Field Marshal Robert to dice. Mm -hmm. Four are going across here. Four are going into this. These are all vehicle units. So Mike's going to re-roll his hit roll. Hit roll. Wound roll. Wound roll. Damage roll. Yeah. Oof, boy. So. And he's paying a CP for sustained. Not paying it. Not paying it. Captain's done it. For free. Because it's a battle tactic strategy. Yeah. And what's it called? Battle drill recall. Uh, you get the sustained hits ability. Zero. If you had a set still, it would have been fives. fives. Amazing. But because it comes on reserve, it counts as moving. Mm -hmm. um, so it will be four. There's two of them, which is the heavies. And then two normal here. And then the other two. Uh, yeah, the two bow headed guys is the multi motors. Yeah. And then the two guys at the back out of range will go into the... The potency's there, Mike. It's yeah. all down to a certain thing. The dice. Of Valhalla. Valhalla Field Marshal Robert, the commander of this force, a diehard Imperial Fist player, yeah. says... Well, that's a sexist. Oh, that was one. The rest have hit, nice. So that's the two multi melters have actually generated five hits here. Yeah. Right. Strength. Nine. Toughness is five. So threes. Threes to find. Rerolling, of course. Oh boy, <laughs> it's down to me now. Five, five. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Max Shield Knuckles. I'll look for help from Patreons here, but I need some invulnerable saves. I'm glad we have the invulnerable of the shield generators. <laughs> what have we here, Gandalf? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right, one goes through. Um, <laughs> could have been good, but... Shield, note to self, must keep shield generators. Do not swap them for anything. D6 damage. How many ones are these guys got? Six. Do oh, four. Okay, four wounds cause. It's not bad. So one of them's on the road to oblivion. Two wounds remain. Uh, we'll put it on... The really? Yeah. You can do if you want to. Push for a six. Oh, it's built in for free. It's not a command yeah, reroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's hit one for hit. Roll. Damage roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do if you want to. Four's good, but you still got two multi -mil. Uh two he's going for it. For three, it's one worse. Jeez. Okay. If he had got the six, it would have been a model out of the way and he can move on to the next one. Two uh melt of rifle shots. Yeah. I was going to say double six would be good. Snake eyes, but that can be re-rolled. Oh. One hit comes through. No wound. Oh. Oh. Still doesn't wound. Oh. That was the opportunity. It's a unique move that Captain Parmenian at the moment likes to do. Arriving on the flank, laying down some melter damage. But the tower have withstood that. It's not just about what the tower can do with their firepower, but it's able to the ability to absorb what comes their way and uh, shield generators uh, are going to get technology item of the game because they've helped out numerous times here <laughs> throughout this battle. End of the game. You know the game? Shield Tower. <laughs> uh, two melt rifle shots into this thing. Yeah. <sighs> two twos. Aha! And a sustained. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, threes. Are you rolling? Yep. Got me. <laughs> so, <clears throat> well, we've got seven wounds left, so just we'll see. Uh, four pluses. Block two. D6. Two. Rerolling. Rerolling. 
five, but uh, dropping down to two inch left. That's very helpful. All right, it's still alive, but two inch remain. Okay, the impact. If we didn't have shields, the damage would have been superb. Uh, bolt stalk gauntlet went into here. Uh, three wounds past two on cover, one slain, but feel no pain from him. Uh, blocked it, so no further damage. That's them finished. The potency is there. The potency is there for sure, but uh, tower rolled above average uh, with the shield generators. Mm -hmm. The ATV is going to one to yeah. Heavy shot into him. Dacker into those. Yeah. Okay. So the uh... two shots in fours. Snake eyes. And there's nothing that Mike can do about that one. It's his trademark, but it's come at the wrong time. <laughs> I suppose the snake eyes would always <laughs> would always come at the wrong time in a game. And now some Dakar into the Fire Warriors. Three nice. to wound. And this okay. cover. Three up. Foul both. Uh, feel no pain. Foul both. Two Fire Warriors slain. Dragnaught Firepower is going to split in different directions. Because there's models to be slain from there. There's one on three wounds left. And there's him to get rid of on two. So Mike... Uh, it's, I think I'd, I'd split, I think, in, in different directions. So it's all been declared. Mike can just work his way through the weapons one at a time. Yeah, so I'm going to do the onslaught gatling hand first. Down there, yeah. Okay. Got one Imperial player left if you want to patronise it. He's Blood Angels, I'm going to leave it. Save for combat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, threes. Space Marines want their revenge against the tower. The tower here came in peace. All we wanted to do was retrieve the body of a fallen commander, but Space Marines have uh, brought this upon themselves. Strength 6, toughness 6, 4 is the 1G. Your toughness 6, 1G? Uh, yes, broadsides are a bit tougher, I believe, at toughness 6. Yeah. They are, yeah. So 4 is the 1, but we're looking 6 is for the dev. We've got 1. Got one. And then 2, no AP. 2 ups. Survived. Wound taken. Drop it down to one wound left. Hmm. Twin frags, one grenade launcher. Yep. Six. Six. Okay. Six. Threes. Threes. And then fives. Yep. One. One. Oh, he passed. We may still be alive here. The twin storm holder. Going down here. Yeah, just fishing for whatever I can. Twin linked. Nope. No, okay. So he's gonna stay alive, huh? You could do, but you do have the marine squad behind. I with their bolt that, rifles, yeah. if there's range, which I think they have. Yeah, no, I measured up where they were. At so the macro plasma and the uh, Icarus frog pod. Yes. So there's two only one, three ones left, isn't there? Yes. So the plasma incinerator, D6. D6 plus one plus another one. Yeah. Six man squad. Four. Six in total. This could cause harm. Needing threes. <laughs> threes. Rerolling. All right. Mike's rerolling because of over the moment. Yeah. Threes. Space Brain Space Tower is always a vicious gunfight. We've certainly got that here in this game. So it's four at minus four and flat three. <sighs> Need the shield generators once again. Tower technology says block half. So three. Three damage each. Right, so that kills him. He's gone. And then his buddy can take three, which half slays him. So we'll just leave that marker on the other. This is the, the Ben Shaw squad. Bodyguarding, doing their job, but their potency is being knocked down here. There's two models slain from that squad. And then the Echo Rocket Pod D3 shots for two. It's not blast, is it? I don't think so. Uh, nope, just let me fly to it. Uh, Rerolling. Yeah, 
so got them twos. Anti fly two plus. Yeah. Minus one. That's minus one, two damage, yeah. Uh, blocked one, one comes through, which is two damage, which knocks me down to one wound left on that model. And then I'll do the, the marine with the bag. Into him to try and yeah. wheedle out that last wound. So this will be 20 shots. Let on threes. So all like all looking quite average here. And then fives and sixes. Is fives? Uh, this this can be done. Yep. Hopefully. Oh. One, two, two three. three. Yes. I don't think there's much I can do. We are getting cover, so one has gone through, which we all know what that means. Come on, reroll, surely. Yeah, we'll have to do it. We've got three CP and a six. It's been stopped and it's not gone through. The two up armor save protecting us uh, there in the end. So, firepower I think is complete across so, yeah. here. Bikers nice. shooting? Yeah, yeah, we'll shoot with those next. And the lieutenant to try and clear off the tower squad across there as well. Max just fired the lieutenant squad, wiped out the tower on the objective. That's their little mission complete. Bikers next. I have to go into the crisis battle suit team. So choosing the order here is going to save the multi multi shots coming from the ATV. He's going to go for Decker first of all. Yeah. One, two, three, twin boat rebels. Three. Three. Uh, we're rolling. Fly for permit. Still missed. Uh, five needed. Look on sixes because they have wounds with the, the litany. Nice. So that's one dead wound and then two at minus one, one damage. Uh, back up to three up for cover, which we block both. And it's enough to slay him then. Mike's half destroyed the bodyguard squad. And then the two Molly Mothers. Uh, we're rolling. Crucially, oh, two come through. Looks like the shield generators are going to be required again. Freeze. I'm hoping I get two sixes. Oh, there's a six. I get one six, uh, which is a devastating wound. Nice. Four D6. Two. two. Okay, two wounds caused. Okay, so we'll put that up here. And then there's twin bolt rifle that he's got. Uh, yeah, the ATV's a uh, bit of Dakar here. Uh, we roll. Yeah, no. And then five, five and sixes. Uh, twin light. Devastating. Ha! <laughs> well done. Uh, so it drops me down to. I put two there, I shouldn't put two. It's three. Okay. And then the chaplain. Two shots. Uh, no, I need to reroll both of them. Both hit. Needing fives and sixes. Another devastating wound. Uh, twin length. And another devastating wound. <laughs> One wound left. Really good result. Devastating wounds, just bypassing everything. That's what you need. Okay. It, it, it looks a big difference. I've just double checked. It's just within six. So Mike can charge here and fight upstairs. It's a bit strange. That's the way it works. Uh, it is fighting six inches vertically, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. fine. So that's the way you can play. Okay. So shooting phase is finished. Mike can go for this charge and I can't overwatch. If the impact is good enough, Mike could get his sweet revenge against the squad. Eleven, right. Well, in they go. Yeah. And we're saying you know, it's deadly, they fired, they destroyed that squad. But that was a 200-point squad that we cut through. That's a 500-point combination. So, yeah. yeah, we struck hard, but Mike's grinding these down quickly. And a nice clean cut in close combat will cause trouble. Yeah, and um, when I move these in, the ATVs want to charge both. Got so breached to there yeah. and disrupt both. Okay. And they'll obviously charge as well when I get this. Right. 
Mm. Yep, what did you roll, Mike? 12. A 12. <laughs> Captain Palmer, he senses the need of the hour and has gone in for a full-on charge here, 12-inch charge. Went with the ATV first, tucked it in here, tapped into this. And Captain Pumain and his squad going into the Fire Warriors. So all of a sudden, we find ourselves in a situation where Imperial, Imperial Fist were back here. This big gap, which was ideal for the tower, has been closed very quickly. The Imperial Fist now stretched uh, halfway along the board here. So a real tussle for these central objectives. Tower do not have this game easy. Imperial Fists taking the fight to them. And some extreme results coming through. Uh, and this is my main killing unit. It's half destroyer, and it's bound to take more damage coming through the charging chaplain and bikers. So Mike doesn't really have to worry about any kind of interrupt play. We're so useless in close combat. So it's free to fight here. We could interrupt. We do have the, the CP, but it's just, it really is not worth it. So Mike's free to fight first here. Tower does need to try and weather the storm. Mike's grabbed the Blood Angels, Ryan, for such a time as this. I've used stim injectors to try and bolster <laughs> our immunity here against this. Uh, it's Imperial Fist attack. Uh, he's going to go with the ATV first, try and pick off the single wound from this. Yeah. So, uh, five attacks, hit my member. Um, I get a reroll. Because of a moment. Yeah. Oh, how useful. And then I'm strength four. Yes. Roughness five. Uh -huh. um, plus one to win roll from the chaplain, so back to fours. Fine. Right. No EP. One one comes through. Ah, uh, Stim. No. Just gonna take him away. Just try and survive, try and survive. I'll be happy if we can survive with the rest. And then we'll blast our way out of trouble. Next, you can go for the chainsaw guys or yeah. chaplain, whatever you want to do. One, two, three. Okay, chainsaws, by the looks of it. Hitting on trees. Fours. To wind. Fours to wind, yeah, chain swords. Bit of AP minus one uh, will come through here as well. Good roll. Mm, four, six, eight. Okay, four ups. Insane amount of uh, sixes being rolled. Oh, block all of them. 75%. Two wins come through. So we drop to four left. We'll go on this model here. And the chaplain now. Two clean wounds coming through it would kill another Crisis Battle Suit team member. But they're doing their job. They're uh, bodyguarding here and protecting the commander himself. So five attacks, hit on twos. Are you rolling? Three's to win this time. Yeah. No, twos. Strength six. Yeah, tough as yeah, five. Twos. Well, well, well. The chaplain. Chaplain for Lotus. It's not devastating wounds, is it? That would be quite nice. <laughs> no. no. Okay, right. Five make it through. This is really good. Uh, shield generators. Come on, oh, <laughs> God, oh dear. I don't know, no. Oh dear, it should be 50% success, but we're looking at 80%. Yeah, for the <laughs> um, we'll go for uh, stim injectors to push up the percentage. We don't, two wounds taken, drop it down to two left. Oh, we've survived. Two wounds apiece. Yeah. yeah. No, um, I blocked them all apart from one. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Five wounds. Blocked um, four. No, no. Mike wants to go home, but he has to stay. <laughs> we'll go for uh, the Captain Parmenian across here. Uh, or his brethren, whichever way you want to go. Uh, if you save Captain Parmenian, there's a chance of getting through to Ethereal, who's mm. a multi-wound model, if you want to save him with his fist attacks. Yeah, I'll go to the Radicators. First. Yeah, regular educator squad, or you can chip in first with the ATV. It's more well, likely the ATV to. to try and chip off. <laughs> oh, the single wound from him. I see the dastardly plan. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's a good tussle in this game. It's a good tussle. Yeah, Space Marines. 
I, I, I think we know, I don't know, it's going to say this is the last assault. Not really, there's a third wave lining up here. So the town needs to deal with this, they've got to deal with that as well. But once they're gone, Mike's burnt out. There literally is nothing left after that, apart from Frank. Frank. Who will not <laughs> launch a one-man charge against the town. Oh, right, so freeze. Yeah, this is the Eradicators fighting. We'll zoom in just to capture a bit of the, the flavour of the desperate fighting taking place. Look at that, Imperial Fist versus Tau. They hate each other. We rock. Mike's mm. rolling here. Threes and strength four, toughness. Three. Threes. No, you'll, you'll smash them down. It shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Ten, four, six. Uh, no minus four ups. Ooh, above average again. Blocked all those. And five plus for no pain coming from the ethereal. <laughs> stay, you're not allowed to leave. You have to stay, you have to stay. <laughs> it's crazy. The tower, they're built of strong stuff. What's going on? <laughs> they're not minnows in the sea, they're leaping salmons. <laughs> Go. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> Space room. Space Marine, like, square punch straight in the face and the, the Tower Fire Warrior gets back up in defiance here as they zealously protect the Ethereal and the objective. Ooh, and we're winning on OC control, potentially, if we stay alive. Five poor fist attacks. Captain Parmenian. Get on twos. Twos. Whoa, look at that. Triple six of five and four. Twos to win. Winding on twos. Come on, they've all gone through. Five, minus two, two minus damage. Two. Six ups to block. None. Two damage each. Mm -hmm. Right, in pairs, because you never know. First one, dead. Next one, dead. Next one, lives. <laughs> they survived the crush. Almost lived. And the last one, almost lived. Okay, right, so four dead instead of five. We'll take away ones near or further away from the objective. One, two, three. Okay, that's knocked my OC down a lot. Is it a chain sword? Or yeah, the sword? extra uh, chain sword attacks. I think it's an extra three, yeah. I think, with him. One, two, three. In twos. This could really make the difference. Captain Parmenian himself will wrestle this objective away from the tower. That's where it should be, in the thick of the fighting, that's where it belongs. Um, threes. <coughs> oh no! <laughs> what can you do? Oh dear, right, okay, two ones and a two. Don't even need to call out the results here, you can just go by the, <laughs> the emotional sounds coming uh -huh. right here from yeah. either player. Alright, so Captain Fominians, uh, so now you've got choice to make. You can try and run over Tower Fire Warriors, or try and chip off the wind from this thing. Two up save I'm going to get is unlikely. You'd have to wound me a couple of times and then me, me roll a one. Maybe do you want to calculate OC first before you make that decision? Stop the tower, no. pick out the points. Or do you, are, are you really set on sticking to the plan? No, I'm not. Yes. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Drive. Run them over. It's only a family thing. That's right, we're just building up here for the league, but uh, a bit of a grudge building up between these two armies. Oh, come on. What happened? Oh. <laughs> He's using his Necrony Salamander dice here, and it's not... It, why, what the... Hang on a second, we've, we've just remembered. Look. Oh, no. I've locked the cross. And, yeah. Just remember to use, the <laughs> to use the Imperial Fist dice. If you had have gone by the book and used those... What would have happened? Ha! Much better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, so one comes through. He went, look, he's not going to switch, though. He'll stay with the greens. And then <laughs> he's going to roll up for the win. He's got a one. You must switch to the yellow dice. That's it. The orders come from above. Um, Mike's green dice are on eBay if anyone's, <laughs> if anyone's interested. Uh, do we attack back with our crisis battle suits who actually cause two wounds with these coming through because <laughs> Mike was rolling ones and twos for his saves uh, and then a crosshair wound caused uh, from here as well onto the ATV nothing against the squad from the fire warriors and the ethereal that's combat's completely uh, resolved now so tower they've taken a battering 
uh, but they've kept models alive. These are vehicles. They can shoot into close combat, so don't be surprised if you see the tower sit exactly where they are and then just at close range uh, pour firepower into these units. So close combat's finished. Empirifists have done okay. We'll check the OC on, on this. Uh, and Tau have got some battle shock tests to do as, as well, so there's that to figure out. We'll calculate points at the end of the turn here. End of turn three. Empirifists have given a good account of themselves. They've taken the fight to the Tau. Uh, but the Tau are holding their own at this point. There's a real tussle here to try and swing the game in either direction. So points coming through. Add Mike got Five points across there because he controlled the objective at the start mm -hmm. of his turn. Two points for the home objective. It's a sticky objective across there because of the intercessors. Uh, so seven points coming through. Nothing for secondaries. Mike's uh, discarded both cards and draw fresh next turn. That takes him to 21 points here at the end of turn three. Town 15. Uh, about to pick up seven. We've passed battle shock tests. We've rolled up already. And OC control, we have it here because of him. Six, seven, eight, nine. Eight for the Fire Warriors, nine for him, ten, eleven uh, for uh, the broadsides. That means we have one of the No Man's Land objectives. So uh, a good effort here from the Imperial Fist, but we sense the Tau still have the advantage, but they've really got to try and uh, clear their lines here on turn three. We'll see if they can do it. And they've got to do it effectively because there's a second wave of Imperial Fists coming in as well. Turn three for the Tau coming up next. All right, so turn three for the Tau. We've pulled out a close combat across. There's no point staying close combat and dying, so pull back to there. Both Hammerheads have now rounded the corner. I think their main target is going to be the Dreadnought. Remaining close combat across here. We'll stand next to the slain commander here. We've Commander Ghost ID. He will not move. So remaining close combat. We'll shoot into close combat. Try and clear... Uh, the bike unit if we can it's going to be tricky enough fire warriors remaining where they are shadow sun has gone into the corner uh, for our card investigate signals so hold within nine inches of a table corner uh, air denial is the other card which we'll, we'll figure that out but the main priority is just to shoot into close combat uh, broadside just rolled a one for their uh, advance so we can try and move them around onto the objective uh, command reroll will go five so we've gone 10 inches in total and in the crisis battle suits have gone 10 over onto that objective, and the idea is to try and clear away a uh, lieutenant and his squad. So tower countering now. We'll go on to their shooting phase next. So the stealth team, which has sort of worked in partnership with these, is going to work together. So the stealth team is just there. It jumped across, by the way. It's jumped through to the other side. You can see them just over there. Uh, they're going to mark a light up these. We're going to guide these in, and the stealth team will shoot across into the lieutenant's uh, squad is the idea so here we go we'll do these down into here two fusion blasters from the squad sixes are great so two hits and sustained we'll then go for threes to wound and they've all wounded not covering close combat and AP minus four straight through D6 plus 2, that's 4, one, <clears throat> 1 and 3, so that's going to slay the ATV, and now we're on to bikers, 5 wounds, 5 wounds again, so that's ATV and 2 bikers brought down so far, it's blistering firepower uh, coming from this squad, there's not much Mike can do about it. So, nasty stuff. We'll go for plasma rifles next from the squad. Rerolling ones for the commander. Two hits coming through and sustained two is horrifically good when that happens. Uh, three to wind on the bikes. Rerolling the ones because of the stealth team. These are minus three, so saves of six plus. On three dice. What's the damage on this? Damage three. Uh, so we'll do it two at a time. We'll because you're onto the time. chaplain's in fund. Yeah, gotcha. So six is required, yeah? Yeah, single six will keep you alive. Nope. Gone. And now we're on to a four plus invulnerable save. This is efficient killing here. Blocks that one though. Well done. Okay. Uh, so we'll go for 
just to keep the dice rolling simple, we'll go for the, and I have declared a uh, supercharge all the other weapons. We'll do hazardous checks in a moment. Uh, but we'll do the commander's fusion. Could still be a hit if he starts on a three up, which he's bound to. Because that takes us to a two and then minus one for close combat. Uh, correct, yeah, so that is a hit. And it's a wound come through, so four plus invulnerable save. This is a fusion. It's the last fusion and has been blocked. Well done. Uh, one plasma rifle shot. Tip is six. So one hit becomes three. Three's to wound. Two wounds come through. Uh, four plus invulnerable save. Three damage each time. Blocked one, blocked one. Three wounds caused against the chaplain on the bike. Here, yeah, you could command reroll to keep it away. You're down to cyclic iron blaster shots, which will be damage two. Yeah, no, I'll seek it. Try and block it. No. No, three wounds caused. And now we're down to cyclic iron blaster. We'll go for the commander first. Rerolling ones. So they've all hit. We've sustained. Three to wound. Rerolling ones again. Look at that for the stealth tank. Oh, turning failure into success here. Uh, five saves of minus two. Five saves of four plus. Each one's damage two. This surely is the end of the the brave chapter on the bike. Oh, it's a good roll, triple five, but uh, four wounds come through. So it's going to be nine wounds now, or seven wounds now in total, so I think he's gone. That's brave chaplain for Lotus, commanded by Michael Fryer. So he's removed from play. They've done their job. I had a cross here. Decent team, for sure. Uh, Captain, or uh, Commander Ghost Tide's uh, crisis battlesuit team. <coughs> So we've done the stealth team firing across, picked off a marine and put a wound on another. Shadow Sun, we reckon she can mark a light up. She can guide a target, even if she doesn't shoot herself. And she's busy in the corner doing the secondary. So she's lighting those up. She can see them just about. Uh, Going to help out the uh, Crisis Battlesuit team with the missile pods. So we're then looking for threes. Really good. Those sixes generate three more. Threes to wound. I've just remembered I've got hazardous to do, which we'll up for in just a moment. Uh, threes to wound with no kind of rerolls. As she has the marker light ability. No, she doesn't. So Mike will get cover on 12 saves. Basically, it's going to be cancelled out by your by my minus one. Yeah, twelve saves of three plus. Okay, yeah. yeah. Have we done enough? It's damage two. Oh yeah. Gone through. Marine dead and six wounds coming from the lieutenant. Lieutenant Cletus gone. We have no CP to make a further manoeuvre with those, which would have been useful. But we've cleared <clears throat> cleared and held that objective. It's looking pretty secure now uh, for the tower. Just zoom in so you can see where the the firing has taken place just over there. That's the missile pod support team doing their work over on that flank. All right, Tau have tipped the game now. There's not too much left on the board for the Imperial Fist. There's resistance around here, but Tau have cleared that side of the table. There's nothing over that side. We'll press on. Hammerheads might be able to really tip things here. So we'll go for uh, Long Strike first of all to put his shot right into the Stregnaut across here. So Long Strike shot needing a two. Yes. So, yeah, he's on twos for his hit, so he's got his hit come through. Uh, it's threes to hit and then plus one for shooting at a vehicle. Uh, we'll now try and wound on a two. That's devastating. So we'll go straight to damage of two, plus six, eight against the Dreadnought. Minus, Minus one. one, seven caused. Dropping down to... Ooh. Starts on 12 or 13? 12. 12. Five. Five wounds left. Okay, there's some pressure now on hammerhead number two. Okay. 
Uh, to rinse my massage system across here, uh, we fired that and it's caused two wounds on the ATV. We'll rinse and repeat. So, main weapon across here, the railgun, and then the twin smart missile systems. So, single shot from hammerhead number two. Uh, it is being guided by long strikes. That's plus one to the ballistic skill, takes us to three up. And we're going after a Bickle with armor hunter. Twos. A six would be fantastically good. It's gone under our special thing again. <laughs> and it is a two. So it's okay. I'll we'll stick to that. Twos for a wound. Not devastating, but it does go through. It's ignoring cover. It's AP minus five. So we're straight onto the... That's a kill. Six damage. Isn't it? Straight up. Plus the d6. Plus one. So uh, seven wounds. Minus one. Six. Six. Five wounds left. It's gone. So just see if he detonates. Nope. No. It's okay. But Dreadnought. Usually they last. They just... But... This game is where armies just run into these things. It takes forever to bring them down. But the Rao guns are dangerous <clears throat> on the battlefield. Dreadnought removed from play. Let's paint Lucas Paint Pot. Dreadnought gone. So I just finished off with the twin Swamish Star Systems. So yeah, hold it right there. I've split my shots. I split it with Long Strike and I split it with him. So my wound, we're going to figure this out here. So my wound went through, no problem. But I rolled to hit you mm -hmm. or two. Which was a miss. So I'm going to use my built in reroll to try and get better than a two, a five. Right. So the result from that stands. I'm going to check back on the footage here for Long Strike. Uh, no, just checking the rules here. Interesting. As Long Strike's totally fine with what he did because he wasn't guided by anybody. He was just going on his own ballistic skill, which is fine. So all the results stand for that. I reckon I still needed a two as well. Uh, it's with hammerhead number two, just clarifying the rules here. It says, each time a model in a guided unit makes an attack that targets their spotted unit. So uh, he was guided in onto the Dreadnought. You get plus one to your ballistic skill. And if you do split, if you go after a unit uh, that's each time a model in a guided unit makes an attack that does not target their spotted unit, which we did down here against the ATV, it's worse than the ballistic skill uh, of the uh, attack by one. So for example, uh, Force to hit becomes threes against him. Force to hit becomes fives to hit against him. So it's you can still fire effectively against mm -hmm. your guided unit. Interesting. So just checking the rules there. I think we've got that correct. So we'll leave the results as they stand. Uh, here, Dregnaut has been uh, destroyed. That's the main result that we were after. So Tau Firepower comes to an end. Uh, it's been blistering. They've wiped that half of the board. Uh, Dragnaut's been removed, which is one of the main thrusts here for this uh, counterattack. Captain Parmenian is here, so there's potential for him to push on uh, to go after targets. What we'll do, though, is we'll stop the turn. Here's no charges to take place for the tower. Uh, we'll go on to uh, resolve points now uh, at the end of turn three for the tower. Okay, so calculating points into the turn. Uh, we've got to roll on this game because it's not over yet. The Imperial Fists aren't doing too bad points-wise. So we picked up, in the end, five points for Aerodinar. Tower cleared their lines across here and actually got five points, which they really need, actually, because the, the, the score is tight at the moment. Uh, then Investigate Signals. Uh, points picked up in that corner as well from Shadow Sun. That took us to 24 points to 21. So the game is only three points difference between these two sides. Uh, we've gone ahead and drawn cards for Mike here, uh, using a CP to dump one of the cards that was drawn. Defend Stronghold. Excellent. Mike can do that. And the other card that was drawn after the discard is Bring It Down, which is Destroy Crisis Battlesuits. And Mike again can pick up points. He's going to get two here as well for primaries. Five here across uh, over on this flank also. So the points are flowing here for the Imperial Fist. The tower do not yet uh, have victory at this stage. So we've gone to the fourth turn of the game. The Space Rains are still bravely fighting away. And oh, be careful. This is a Kingslayer game. Mm -hmm. and both kings are not safe at this point in the game. We'll press on turn four for the Space Marines next. So moving for the Space Marines on turn four, uh, just move these up to get them in range. Remaining stationary here because Mike doesn't want to draw in Overwatch uh, from the Crisis Battlesuit team and Commander. So that's it. Maneuvering is done. We're going to shooting phase next. All right, shooting phase. We're going to capture this on camera. We're talking about Kingslayer. No, no, Mike can do it. Oh, no, it's not Kingslayer. No. Oh, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. Sorry, sorry. So, yeah, we're talking about Kingslayer. For this battle, Shadow Sun 
is the warlord. Mm-hmm. But for the my my faction tower right. king okay. is Ghost Tide. So there is a chance to bring him down. Because for the, for this season I've elected him. Uh, Shadow Sun's just like ah, yes. a temporary stand in. We did talk about this. <laughs> yes. So uh, Mike does have a chance at Kingslayer if he can bring Ghost Tide down so early on. I had ambitions for him to survive for so long, but oh no, Captain Parmenian has other ideas. Go ahead, we've got multi melter shots um, and melter rifle shots. We haven't dealt with this squad. Now remember, stay yeah. still. Yes. Haven't moved. Mm-hmm. Plus one to the hit roll. Yes. Plus one to the wound, wound roll. roll. <gasps> and I've paid the seat or the captain uses once per turn battle tactic to have exploding fives or exp- sustained hits on fives. Whoa. It gives them all their weapons the ability of sustained hits. And if you haven't moved, it goes off in fives. We're dead. <laughs> He's got the yellow dice. <laughs> so after you, Mike, away you go. So the multi melder is fours down to threes. Oh. Oh. No, he hasn't an oath. Where's the oath? Down here, because Mike Oh, wait. It doesn't matter. We roll hits, wounds, and... Carry on. Damage. Oh, no, no, triple five. <laughs> Three more hits. We're doomed, we're doomed. We are doomed. He's happy. Oh, no. Three. Go. Threes, Threes twos. Twos, yep. Twos to wound. Splash onto the wing roll. Oh, this is a perfect situation with them. Full squads. Remaining stationary. Seven. Oh, minus four. Four ups need a miracle. Oh, terrible. Uh, D6 on the first model. Uh, come on, reroll. Um, <laughs> I have to, it's my duty. I know it's not worth it, but we'll try. Blocks that one. So, first one, D6. I might have got that down got four. four. It's all rerollable. So, just take one dice and try and get a two. It's all the one. Reroll. Have it. another go. Two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. Right, so that's him gone. So, now you're trying to get rid of uh, a crisis battle suit just to do one at a time. Yeah. Because you could max out on this one. Five. So five. Uh, you can try and fish or keep no. the five. No. So you're just going to kill me straight off. Yeah. And then now d6 damage on my commander of a four. Okay. Five wounds. Oh, with a drone is uh, six wounds. And you scored a four. Yeah. So you've got two wounds left. And I have four mother rifles. Yep. Hitting on twos. If I survive, I'm getting out of there. <gasps> oh no, six. Twos to wound. They're amazing. They're so good. They've all wounded. Yeah. Six. Any six, four ups. Otherwise, it's another King Slayer. Dead. Cock dice. Dead. Lives. 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 Oh. So, E, it doesn't matter. No, but you can roll anyway just for. And then we roll that too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> He's gone. Well, well, well. My, how the tables have turned. (laughs) We were sent to investigate the dead commander. Now, (laughs) there's two. (laughs) Oh, dear. Commander Fallen Star. Now, Commander Ghost Tide's been slain as well. What a... What a... What a failure that is to be sent to investigate a slain commander and then to die yourself in the process. Captain Parmenion, well done. Hoorah, say the Imperial Fist. But exacting a bit of revenge there, turning this place into a crisis battlesuit graveyard. Mm. Yeah, and then Captain Parmenion turns to the Fire Warriors, extends a hand, but not in friendship, but instead with a bolt stormed gauntlet. Take this, Xenos filth. Two wounds come through. And of course, a snake eyes. <laughs> he guns them down. <laughs> Feel no pain. Oh, one of them gets back up. All right, model slain. You could charge off there and slam into stuff, couldn't you? Come on. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, it's ten shots across here going into this. I'm going to leave it for a second. 
I'll put the molten melt there. Oh, yes. And a bit of decor into there. Yeah. Go ahead. So. Oh, tower casualties are running heavy now. Full fit. Um, Three's to win. Just the one? Yep. Uh, four plus invulnerable save. Blocked. So Mike will need the intercessors, I think, to go after this. No nope, one's coming through. Down to the intercessors then. It's going to be uh, ten shots. Only ten ranges there. Sorry, you two shots or one? Hmm. 20 shots then. Two shots. Uh, what I'm going to do is my two CP that I have. Yes. Re roll. Wounds. Yeah. Nice. So re rolling hits and wounds. Mike wants to bring this thing down, which will really clear this flank. Got sweet revenge here between uh, what we hear from the fists against the tower. Really starting to balance the game out. Can you believe it? Threes, re rolling. But I want them dead from the multi melt as well. Could have put these guys then under the fire warrior. To clear them, yeah. Yeah. This game's going to be closer than what I thought here. And then fives. Fives to wind, yeah, because we're top to six. That's right, fives to wind. Oh, that's going to be loads here. Six so far. Seven. Just the eight. Dead. Yep, two wounds come through. That's enough to bring him down. That's the Vagabond squad gone. Tower losing their assets here. I can give that back to you. And take away some drones here. And these drones belong to them. Oh, tower casualties running very high. Okay, so what we've done is we've pressed ahead and gone on to charges and resolved combats. Captain Parmenian's squad's gone in. Careful about the arrangement here, keeping Captain Parmenian within three inches uh, of the objective. Uh, wiping out everyone and putting a wound onto the ferro, but not quite destroying him. We caused a wound that might pass. So uh, virtually clearing the tower from here. And in fact, that drone can go. That's the Guardian drone. Those two drones belong with uh, the ethereal just there. And that's it. So Imperial Fists, this is what's left of them. But for the tower, they've been decimated in the center of the board. Certainly cleared off this objective. Two hammerheads in operation, but their weaponry not quite cut out for these kind of targets. And the rest of the tower force, which is needed to deal with this, they find themselves way across the other side of the board. We'll calculate points at the end of turn four for the Space Marine. So Mike's picked up eight points. That was for... Bring yeah, it down. Bring it down. Mike's dead for eight. And it is, eight is the max. Yeah, Brilliant the card. Max, yeah. Gosh, uh, so, so useful. Can that score more than eight BP? Okay, so eight points picked up. It's a really good one. Two points for the home. Five points mm -hmm. for the middle ground as well. Taking Mike to 36 points to 24. Uh, so he's got himself nicely ahead here. So I've got a turn in hand, but we'll see what we can do. We're going to pick up points for primaries. Uh, but the space rings need to be cleared off of this. Or go for some kind of stretch across here somehow or we'll try and figure out uh, something here the tower all of a sudden could be looking at a defeat here if they don't keep these points flowing in plus mike has more points coming in for defend stronghold which he won't pick up the points yet but he will at the end of my turn mm -hmm. okay we'll go on to tower turn four next all right so turn four for the tower cards drawn storm hostile objective and defend stronghold as uh, points picked up for that flank objective and the home objective, so that's seven points as we try and catch up with the Space Marines now. Stealth team has moved across to fire down here. We maxed out with a auto advance six with the Crisis Battlesuit team, so there's not going to be no shooting from them. Uh, roll six for her advance. She's shot across uh, in this direction from the corner. Haven't moved the Fire Warriors. Hammerheads have gone for a, a, a dash across here to go after this objective. Uh, the Pharaoh had to make a desperate escape test, which he passed, has got onto objective here, but he's just got a couple of wounds left. Uh, and then we were overwatched. We got off lightly, just took three wounds in the end. Uh, Mike was re-rolling hits, wounds, and damage, but still only managed to cause three uh, wounds against him. <laughs> it really should have been a lot more. For, for example, <laughs> the damage roll of one of the multi melters that came through, Mike rolled a one, which he re-rolled, and then got, a, <laughs> got another one. So that was the... The three wounds that came through. Yeah. So, um, 
we will go on to shooting phase next. So we're going to try and use these rail rifles to blast holes in this uh, unit if possible. Okay, so shooting phase finished. Firing down here uh, with these. Uh, rail gun shots going into here and then the rail gun shot coming from long strike destroyed the ATV. It's ATV destroyed. This is the total damage. And two of the eradicators are removed from play as well. All right, we'll go on to charges uh, for the tower next, which there are. We're going to charge the tanks. We're going to try and do tank shock as well. All right, so uh, combats have been resolved. Charges, combats, uh, uh, some crazy stuff going on here. It looks like the hammerheads uh, have managed to tip this here for the tower. Maybe the tower's done enough to wrestle this back. So first up was uh, these charges went ahead. Long strike went first. Uh, then we did tank shock, which only got six dice because we're coming in at strength six on our profile, toughness six uh, for Mike's squad, but we rolled three five pluses, so it knocked down another one of these. Uh, we Both charges went ahead. Uh, we caused no damage. Mike did some damage back, dropping long strike back down to eight. So that's the situation as it stands. Mike's got two models uh, in range of the objective, so that gives him two points. Uh, it's long strike. Uh, is reaching across here, OC of three. And him is four against two. Mike does have a stratagem that would double his OC control, but that would only take him to four, which would draw with us on his next turn, which means he still wouldn't pick up the points of this objective. So it looks like the tower, in the most desperate uh, of ways here, has managed to wrestle back control of this objective. It looks temporary, though, and you can see Captain Parmenian in amongst the hammerheads here, refusing to yield ground, but the tower just aggressively trying to push onto this objective, plus the affair that's managed by a miracle to crawl through uh, onto this flank objective. The rest of the board's clear for the tower uh, here, but they've managed to make a difference. Now, this is so important because scoreline coming through, because tower have managed to grab this objective across here, they've actually picked up storm hostile objective, which we weren't planning to get. Uh, but that's gone through. Defend Stronghold is in the process of, of being picked up uh, across the other side. Uh, so adding that together, plus our five and two for the home objective, takes us to 36 points, potentially 39 points for uh, Defend Stronghold, in which case both of us are on, after that comes through, 39 points with one turn left. So we're going to discuss turn five, see what could happen. Mike's already drawn some cards. Uh, we'll just see what the options will be. <laughs> All right, so we've decided to, to quit the game at this point. We're just looking at the different options available. Uh, Mike's cards was no prisoners, which he could have been after. It's okay. And then the other one was behind enemy lines, which is just not going to happen. Uh, so turn five for Mike here. Not able to pick up points to this flank objective, crucially. So the tower denied those five points coming through. That's one of the major factors here. Uh, the home objective, fine. Two points have been picked up for that. Uh, as the turn went on, uh, Mike moved out here uh, to grab this with an advanced move. Mm -hmm. uh, I overwatched and picked off two to try and whittle those down. Uh, across here, pistol firepower, nothing going on. In close combat, uh, power fist saves are all triple five. Uh, and then sword are all double six that blocked all damage coming through. They remain as they are. Uh, it's then down to the tower. To, I could pretty much stay where I am, uh, but we can fire into this close combat across here or maneuver off, off onto the objective, which either way it doesn't matter. We'd gain control of this at the end of our turn five. That one across there for another five, so that's five, five, two across there, and then that's enough points for us to gain victory quite comfortably in the end. And then across here, uh, move 10, shoot, uh, and then potentially charge into there. Uh, to try and disrupt that objective, if not grab it. So it looks like the tower have done enough, but it wasn't a clean run for them. Early on in this game, it looked like the tower had enough guns just to, to blow away whatever came forwards for the Imperial Fists. Uh, we saw the devastating attack coming through here from the captain, just blowing away the heavy intercessors very quickly. But the Imperial Fists, Mike, uh, took a measured approach with them. Some well-coordinated attacks coming through, disrupted the tower, uh, slaughtered the tower in places as well, and the tower really had to fight every turn. Uh, to try and get the points coming through. And for most of the battle, there's only a couple of points between the two sides uh, from one turn to the next. So a real good fight in the end. It's, it wasn't a clean uh, victory here for sure. The tower had to work very hard indeed. And it's cost them dearly. It's cost them their king. Ghost Tide, an ambitious tower commander, now lays slain, seriously injured, next to Fallen Star as well. So a nice narrative here in this game. 
to have got victory, but it's been a bloody victory. There's no doubt about that. All right, so units of the game for both sides. As I'm going to go for uh, my combo team across here, we've only just begun to unlock the potential. They have devastating firepower available from those. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I'm actually going to give it to the Hammerheads in this game. Uh, they're extremely reliable firepower, utterly deadly. Dreadnoughts were just like a knife through butter in this battle. And the last ditch charge at the end, I think, is game unit of the game here to really. Uh, these Hammerheads and this maneuver uh, help the tower achieve victory. So I'm going to give it to Hammerhead number one and number two. Uh, and then for Mike, he's going to give it to the Eradicators and Captain Parmenian. Their firepower is utterly deadly. That's a unit that's designed to be in the thick of the fighting. Uh, they relish the fight. Their firepower is absolutely fantastic. So that's units of the game for both sides. A uh, big thank you to our silver level patrons. as Jason Martinez, Marcus Olsen, Ross Caldwell and Miniature Matt. So a big thank you to you for your support at Silver Level on the Patreon page. Keep a look out for more games on the channel and over on channel membership as well. We're building up for the league here. Uh, the Tower are back with a bang. The Imperial Fists looking as solid and resolute as ever. But in this particular fight, Xenos has caused triumph uh, over their Space Marine foe. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time.